Good evening, everybody. This is the Groton Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, April 23rd, 2018. We're going to begin by reviewing the agenda. We start with announcements and then move to a public comment period at 7.05, where you have up to three minutes to come to the microphone and talk about any issues you may have, and we will try and answer any questions that we can. And if we can't answer them now, we'll get back to you with an answer. That will be followed at 7.06 p.m. by the town manager's report. We will, we, are, we will consider approving 2018 fuel storage permits, uh, review a proposed bylaw from the town manager and the chairman of the finance committee to create a permanent municipal building committee, update from the town manager on the senior center construction bids, which were opened last Thursday, a discussion of the town manager's 2017 annual performance review, and to release individual reviews in light of a Supreme Judicial Court decision on the Bolter versus Wayland case. That will be followed at 7.30 by a public hearing where we consider adopting SOAR regulations, rates and fees for the Four Corners SOAR district. Under other business, consider adopting a policy on major initiative planning. Then consider proposing that the town meeting indefinitely postpone consideration of the CPC application, excuse me, CPA application from the First Parish Church review a first draft of ballot question information packets, liaison reports, and then minutes of the regularly scheduled meeting of April 2nd, 2018. Uh, under announcements, the town manager has one, and then we'll get to the board. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn it over to the fire chief. <coughs> thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you for having, allowing us to come in tonight. Uh, I'm here tonight to recognize a few of our firefighter EMTs uh, and one of my EMTs for an <laughs> outstanding job um, on a call that happened a few uh, weeks ago. The, the team that you see sitting here uh, next to me uh, performed CPR on an ind individual who is actually here tonight uh, because of their hard work and their uh, team effort. Teamwork is something that we rely on in order to accomplish our jobs day in and day out. Across Groton, thousands of times every year that the police and fire department rely on this teamwork in order to provide a great service to the community. So before I recognize the individuals, I'd like to recognize the other firefighters and EMTs in the room as well as our police officers, emergency room nurses and physicians as well. Thank you. realize I probably just blew out the cable guys back here because they started clapping on the microphone so that went well <laughs> yes his ears are bleeding on March 20 yeah. yeah we can fix that um, on March 28th of this year at about 9 30 at night uh, two EMTs were at the station following a training session finishing up some paperwork when a car drove into the parking lot with its horn blowing and at a high rate of speed. Upon investigations, EMTs Patrick Kiley and Cody McNair discovered an unresponsive male in the front seat. They quickly assessed him and realized that he was in cardiac arrest and started to perform CPR. Uh, through their effort and the efforts of um, Art Cheeks and Gibson McCullough, who arrived very shortly after, they were able to restore the pulse and breathing of the individual um, and along with the air paramedics and others from our team, get him shipped up to Lowell General where he was treated in a catheterization lab to clear up his heart and he is actually here tonight. Um, Ralph, if you want to come up and say hi. Yeah. Son, you can feel free to come up as well. <laughs> this is Dr. Ralph Spada and his wife's yeah. son. Yeah. So uh, just real quick, uh, I'm an internal medicine physician and have no medical history or anything and just out of the blue just started having pain and uh, we said okay we gotta go to the emergency department and my wife was driving and as soon as we pull out of the driveway I'm out, collapsed. Um, and she starts doing a martial arts thumps uh, <laughs> and drives as fast as she can blowing by the fire department hoping that somebody's going to stop her. And, uh, and so the lights on uh, at your guys' fire, and there were these awesome guys there just finishing their training. And they jumped uh, to it, got an AAD on, did some CPR, and um, saved my life. You know, so uh, I mean, how do you how do you show gratification and, and uh, um, how much we 
appreciate everything you guys did. So um, I do have one more quick question though. Who did the CPR? <laughs> 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 I'm not going to admit it. Huh? Man, that took forever. <laughs> But you didn't break anything. It was like perfectly done. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do some accommodation here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a certificate of commendation uh, presented to a firefighter EMT, and this one will be for Patrick Kiley, Rotten Fire Department for outstanding performance, exemplifying professional character, and exceptional ability, culminating successful patient resuscitation on March 28, 2018. Cheeks. And this is also for um, Firefighter EMT Cody McNair. And the last one uh, who was unable to be here tonight is EMT Gibson McCullough. Right, quick final note, uh, some of my background, I've been uh, both ATLS and ACLS uh, instructor. I was on a SWAT team for five years. And it was all about how to get immediate high quality care and help that people <coughs> need to save lives. And these guys, they were just awesome. You know, they did everything perfect. So, I'd be very proud of them. Awesome. Here, here. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the public, we should really thank our lucky stars. We have a, such a well-trained fire EMS department, as well as police department, and town employees in general. This is just a, a way of showing how well the training can pay off and the dividends it can pay by saving someone's life in a time of need. And we're very lucky that that station was staffed uh, for a training session at the time that you folks pulled in. Well, you may not be here with us this evening. So thank you, gentlemen, for the uh, exemplary job that you did in saving this man's life. And uh, thank you all for uh, serving the town of Groton. Here, here. Now the slave driver has him off the training. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steele. Stay healthy, sir. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> Under announcements, anything further from... Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to get a text message. Uh, the CPC wants me to attend their meeting briefly. So I'm going to get a text message. I'm going to need to run upstairs to their meeting. During that time, if you could take care of some of the... Um, as a matter of fact, there's the text message. If you could take care of some of the other business, and I'll come back and do my town manager's report. So on to the town manager's review. Uh, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> we'll save that for when you get Thanks. back. Uh, selectmen or select board, excuse me, uh, folks, soon to be hopefully a town meeting of select board. Any announcements? Becky? I'm not sure this is the right time, but um, I just wanted to clarify something that was uh, in the newspaper last week. Am I not on the microphone here? Um, about the support for uh, a school resource officer. Um, and I think that there might have been a little bit of confusion. Uh, I just want to state for the record, as I have uh, other times, I am solidly in favor of adding a school resource officer. And my uh, not supporting the citizens petition article at this point and waiting till town meeting is because it is my hope and my assumption that we will include the additional school resource officer in the budget when we pass it. I think that's what we have set up so far. And so the citizen's petition article will become irrelevant and won't need any support. 
We, um, as part of the budget process this year, we have our regular operating budget along with the school assessment and the school budget. And then after that is complete, prior to, I believe, Article 8 is the uh, citizen's petition. Article 7 is a, another article for the purposes of funding Groton's portion of a SRO officer, an additional one above and beyond the one we have. So the hope is that if town meeting funds that SRO, uh, that there would be no need for the citizens petition to move forward uh, and we will have to see at town meeting how this all plays out but assuming the funding does go forward under article 7 there seems at least in this select person's mind not to be a need to move forward with article 8 but it is a citizens petition and we do not have a right to stop that from moving forward um, I think a motion could be made to indefinitely postpone in the event of a success with article number 7 so um, with that having been said, uh, I have received multiple phone calls um, and a few emails concerning the offer that I laid out on the table a few weeks ago on behalf of this board to entertain a discussion of the Indian Hill building permit fees and the board's rationale. Uh, we will be adding that to an agenda at the conclusion of town meeting, which hopefully is some point in mid-May. Um, so we will go through that issue at that juncture. Any other announcements? Seeing none, public comment period. Um, we have a couple folks. Miss Ellen, we'll let, let her. Let them go first. Oh. Okay. Well, Marlena no, no, or no, Miss Ellen? Go first, then. Please. Whoever's <laughs> ready. Hello, I'm Miss Ellen from Main Street. Uh, I would like to encourage you to vote for the new senior center. There are several reasons. Uh, I. In, the, in February, I fell down in my home, and uh, the good news is the uh, EMTs were able to pick me up. And after a few more times falling down, the EMTs picking me up, the captain, Daly, suggested I do assisted living. And I got so down and my, so depressed that I went, I went to the senior center for one of their activities. And they saw how down I was, and they intervened for me. And they called my doctor. And with the doctor, I got OT, PT, the nurse, and a social worker come visit me. So that's very nice. I was able, I was able to get there at the time. Uh, so that's good news. The bad news is because I can't walk as well as I used to, the ramp is really, I have to be able to, to negotiate the ramp because the van is only curb to curb. The rent van does not take me into the senior center. So, and the senior center is very good for social, for mine, and, uh, and let me, they let me start a bridge group. <laughs> so I'm very pro senior center. So I, will, I encourage you all to vote for the new senior center, please. Thank you, Ms. Allen. I'm glad to see you back at our meetings and doing better. <laughs> Uh, Marlena, did you have something? Yes, I just wanted to share with you that um, I had a conference call with the MSBA today, and um, although we are using E and D um, to offset the in, the feasibility study within our budget, um, you will see something that you probably have never seen before, which is going to be the school committee chair to remove the feasibility study from our budget, and remove the E and D uh, allocation from our budget so we can discuss it completely separately and vote on that separate line item um, if the town meeting does allow that to be done separately. And the reason for this is the MSBA has specific verbiage that they would like to be read and voted on by each town. I don't even have the verbiage yet. Their lawyers are going through it. Um, but basically, it's a little bit more of a, a flashlight and a highlight on the fact that it is a separate item that they want to make sure voters know exactly what it is, um, what's it for, and what it costs, and how it's being funded specifically. So the funding mechanism hasn't changed, but it, we're going a step further than just doing a presentation, um, which is something the school committee actually welcomed. So, But I just didn't want to uh, surprise everyone when we... Uh, make that motion uh, to town meeting. This afternoon we were made aware of that and uh, the town moderator, myself, the chair of the FinCom, the town manager, town council, along with Trish and Don, uh, and who did I miss? 
Anyone? I think I got everybody. Yeah. We had our pre-town meeting meeting where we talked about uh, the motions and the articles that were coming up and any issues that might occur. We were aware of this situation uh, due to an email received from you and had a discussion about that. And town council wants to confer with the state funding authority because if you want to do what you just proposed, we cannot, now that the warrant has been sent and mailed and issued, you can remove what you want. We cannot add an article at this juncture. So that would require a special town meeting in order to do such. And a special town meeting takes 14 days notice, a separate mailing of a new warrant, an opening and closing of the warrant for that. 200 signatures, Mark, help me here if I miss I'm something. Sorry. We're talking about special okay. town meeting yep. if we need one. Um, and what town council is going to do is confer with the state building authority to get the rationale and understand why they want it done in such a fashion. But we could not, to make a long story short, add an article to the warrant at this juncture without calling for another special town meeting. So I think we're going to get the answer for this over the next couple days. Yes, and, and we're aware of the fact that, a couple different things, we're aware of the fact that um, a special town meeting would take farther time and signatures and, and all of that. We understood that. Um, we also understood that adding a warrant article at this time would be difficult, but, <clears throat> and um, actually the MSBA welcomes the discussion with the legal district and municipal because they do want to make sure that everyone is on the same page. It's simply, um, the MSBA, re MSBA requires a s separate vote to make sure that voters are supportive. And that's kind of like the rationale of it. Even though it's in the budget, even though our line items are there for someone to uh, manipulate, if you will, they still want it separate. So they would have preferred a warrant article. However, the warrants are closed. <laughs> so I think maybe go. Mark. So, I'm sorry, Becca. Are we getting another motion? Are you going to split the okay. article into two motions? That's not allowed. What are we talking? I apologize. It's okay. We're on. We're. we're talking about the situation that we were made aware of this afternoon during our pre-town meeting meeting. Yes, so right now, because of the way the assessment was, was sent to us, we can't appropriate the, um, the, the, uh, the money that the school committee was gonna take out of E&D to pay for the, for the flow row. And I think that's what the issue is, right? No, the MSBA wanted us to basically separate the feasibility study separately to voters. So they would- Oh, they want another article. They either A, want another article, which is too late to add, yep. or they want us to basically make a motion to separate that item out of our budget and pay for it in a separate vote. But the problem is the way the assessment gave, came to us on your capital budget of 1.3 million, you deducted out the portion for the feasibility study. So your bottom line assessment is just for regular capital. Uh, not the feasibility oh, study, so there's no way to there's do no it. There's no way to reduce it. Correct. Oh. Because there's nobody paying for it. Because yeah, because they, they already, they technically reduced it in their assessment. Now, if they had given us a full vote, the full amount of the assessment, then we could have taken a separate vote on it. Right, because it would already be in gross Correct. assessment. Yeah, Correct. And you can motion it as a second vote. So, so town council, based on our conversation with town council this afternoon, <laughs> He just wants to see what the opinion is from the uh, SB, MSBA, and then he'll make a decision and make a recommendation to the board. The only problem is, you know, we need time to do a call for a special town meeting. So at this point, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do it within this annual town meeting's dates. One of the what if, I'm sorry, what if the motion were edited such that the language were very, was very clear that part of the budget included this? But the problem is the, the assessment MSBA doesn't. wouldn't accept that? No. No, I, I understand that. Okay, you're right, because it's, the town meeting's appropriating money, and this is not a money appropriation thing. This is a clarification and awareness of what the school district's doing with their budget. Which seems to me to be sufficient, but I'm not on the MSBA, okay. so. Hopefully one of the answers we can get, and I know town council is gonna try and communicate with the state building authority, but you may wanna have town council confer with the district's legal Absolutely. council and have that joint call made. And based on what occurs, we potentially could have an emergency meeting of the board of selectmen for the purposes of setting a special town meeting date. We then, and I floated this idea, and it didn't run over like a pile of bricks, but at any rate, that rather than uh, continuing town meeting to a week from Monday night uh, for the continuated session, if we move that forward 
an additional week or two weeks. So we would have time to call for a special, get a warrant out, and then continue the Springtown meeting and have a special within the Springtown meeting uh, with a delay. That way you wouldn't have to go forward and finish up town meeting and then have to call for another town meeting in June at some point where it would require a quorum of 200, I believe the town clerk told us. 100 and it's 2% two, it's 2 of the registered voters. I believe it's 142. Okay. so. I'm just saying that people might be town meeting out. So if we can um, do it all together, let's see what the answer is. And then if we have to meet to have a, another warrant opened and figure all this out, we shall. Okay, and I will send the information for the uh, legal counsel for the MSBA to Mark so they can all. Yep, speak. so they can get on it tomorrow. Thank yeah. you, Marlena. Yep. Uh, can Jackie? I just suggest that it, your thought about instead of adjourning to a week after, the first night, that maybe what we think about is just locking in the third session because I think if we gamble that everything that's left after one night can happen in the second session plus a debate about the uh, feasibility study which now gets opened up, that would be kind of risky. There's no question. I think right now we have balls in the air that we didn't right. expect to have and uh, we need to get some but answers. But calling a special for the third potential We need 14 might, days might notice. Need we yeah. need to ha open a, a, a special town meeting warrant and that means that we can't just open a special and then I said to Mark and close it 14 seconds later because somebody might want to put something on the special. So we'd need to leave it open for a couple days in case somebody wanted to put something in there and then close it and then 14 days and then doing a mailing and all these things. Getting all that done between now and two weeks from next no, Monday now night? now and Monday. You would have to do between now and Monday. I get that. Right. So I don't know if that's going to work. So don't right. be surprised if the selectmen have to have a special uh, emergency no, I meeting. I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. Are we not allowed, because I mean, this is exigent, sort of exigent circumstances, are we not allowed to call for a special time meeting now? You, you could, but there's still, you open it, I have to post it, I got to get it printed, I got a lot of things I, I have to do. Hearings. I understand. Yep. I don't think I can do it by the 14th is what I'm saying. Have it ready to go for a meeting on the 14th, and that's what Becky was suggesting. So go on the 22nd. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the day before the, the election, the night before the election, the the night before the election. Be. Okay, but it's also the third night that we would have town meeting if we don't finish. Fourth night. It. It would be the fourth, fourth night. night. The third, third night would be the first, like oh. the sixth or something okay, like that, sorry. followed by the 13th. 30th, 7th, 14th, 21st. I thought we were promised by the uh, moderator that we'd only have two nights. I yeah. want the moderator to make sure that happens. We I had a conversation. I had that conversation with him today, Barry. I swear Don I did. Don Don saw me have a conversation with him about it, too. <laughs> Uh, uh, part of the challenge for the MSBA legal counsel that he had mentioned to us today was when he saw the warrant article, I think it's number four, for the town budget, which encumbered the uh, school budget, there was no mention in that article about the feasibility study at all. So that, that it may be a matter of when legal discusses this, when all the legals discuss this, that that particular verbiage about the feasibility study can be added to that. So okay. I don't know, it could be that simple, but again, um, I didn't come in and take up your whole meeting, so I will get the information to Mark. All the legals can do their legal bit and hopefully it will be resolved. So your three minutes are up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything further for, from the public? Seeing no one, uh, hands, that moves you to Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, um, item number two, this is the time of year that we approve the uh, annual, fuel, annual fuel storage permits. Um, up on the screen are the, are the permits uh, that we're asking the board to approve tonight. I would do the first five as one vote and then the, sixth one as, uh, the first six as one vote and the seventh as a separate vote, keeping it with our tradition, Mr. Deegan. So I'd ask the board to approve uh, annual fuel storage permit licenses for Deluxe Corporation uh, at 500 Main Street, Groton School on Farmers Row, Global Montello Group at 6 Boston Road, Groton Dunstable Regional School District at 342 Main Street, PGI Realty LLC at 318 Main Street, and NESSP at 1003 Boston Road. I'd ask the board to approve those permits. I move that we vote to approve the seven mentioned permits. Six mentioned. Six, six mentioned permits licensed to expire April 30th, 2019. Second. 
Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I unfortunately have myriad questions on this one. Um, I'm sorry. Back this so up, Mark. Go ahead. I, I reviewed kind of the bylaw section. And yep. It appears, if my understanding is correct, that these then go to the Board of Health and the Fire Chief? Fire Chief signs off on them before we even bring them to the Board of Selectmen. So the Fire Chief has approved and inspected these facilities. We want to bring it to you for permitting unless he had. I'm not sure the role the Board of Health plays in this. I'm not sure either. The Board of Health has never been involved in this. It's always been the Fire Chief. Okay. And what is the difference between, so the, these are referred to as licenses and then there are permits. Yep. Are they the same thing? What ends up happening is the selectmen by granting this authorizes mm -hmm. the fire chief to issue the license. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're authorizing the fire chief because if you remember, I think the board will recall when you gave the fuel storage permit to the uh, temple. Yes. They came in and they came in for the board's permission to get a permit so that the fire chief could actually license them for the facility. That's what you're doing here. But we do it on an annual basis. These are all, these are all in existence. As a matter of fact, you're renewing the one for the temple. Number six is the one for the temple. That's the renewal for them. Because you permitted them last, what was it last fall, I think, they came before the board? Mm -hmm. Jack, Josh, Barry, do you remember? It says yeah, December of 2016. Well, yeah, so two years ago. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Maybe I should read what I can give you. <laughs> And do these licenses or permits go with the property owner or the business operator? It goes with the property owner. Okay. The property owner or the business operator? Well, the, 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 the operator of the business. For, forgive me. The, the operator of the business. That's what I thought. Yep. So what is the, and this is outside of this, but what are the ramifications if, if there's a spill at one of these facilities? Well, they have, they have insurance. A, they have insurance and they're permitted by the town and they're expected annually to prevent that. And as a matter of fact, when they originally put in the ground, you guys will remember when they came forward, they had the double wall protection, they had the certification come in. There was a lot of things that had happened for you to grant the one to the temple. And that's what we inspect every year to make sure. Monitoring wells, all kinds Absolutely. of things. Right. There's all sorts of stuff on the ground. So I'm familiar with that process. I guess yep. my question is more in terms of if there is an issue, and we have a, a permit issued to a business operator rather than a property owner. They're insured. They have, they have to take out insurance policies on file with the fire chief for these, um, for these licenses. Correct anything I'm saying that's wrong. Don't so what is what is the town's recourse? I mean, typically I would be oh. familiar with the idea that we would put a lien on a property or something like that. I'd have to ask the fire what chief, is the, Allison. I don't know the answer to that question. Are those state regulations or local regulations? Those are state regulations. Allison, I'll have to check okay. with the fire chief and get back to you on that. Okay. I'm sorry I don't have the answer for no, that last I, question. I, anything further? Nope. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of permits one through six, say aye. 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 All opposed? I think that's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I would ask the board to grant a permit to AL Prime Energy, Inc., located at 619 Boston Road. Uh, further discussion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, sorry, did someone second it? Yes. Second. 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 That's four second. in favor. Second. Opposed, aye. Uh, that is. Four to one. Thank you. Carries. Uh, all permits are granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair, Gary Green and I have been working on a proposed bylaw that would create a permanent building committee. Um, as the board knows, we establish building committees uh, per project, and, and both Gary and I would like to formalize a committee that would be responsible for all future projects, including the development and annual updating of long range uh, building maintenance projects for the town. If you go to page 11 in your packet, um, you will see the, the, uh, a draft of a bylaw, and I'm not asking the board to approve this tonight by any stretch of the imagination. Um, what I would ask the board to do is to allow me to you know, pass this off to others, and I would like to include this on the fall town meeting, because this is, this is going to be a permanent committee, and it's going to be a bylaw committee. So this is something that we would like to uh, move. I'd like to take comments from the board and work with the finance committee and come back with a formal proposal in the, in the fall uh, for you guys to consider adding to the warrant. So I'm here to answer any questions that you have. I just wanted to float the idea now, get you thinking about it, have you look at it and get back to me and let me know if there are any issues. That simple. All right, no questions? I like that. No, that's not true. No. <laughs> Becky? I thought there would be a ton of questions, so I was just holding back. Um, yes. 
Uh, I think this needs a lot more discussion. I'm sure that, that's why I'm just bringing it out now, Becky. It's a first step in the process. Um, so I think part of part of what we need to consider is uh, th this has a lot of ramifications for our for the leadership of the town. I mean, building building new buildings in town is. Uh, Big deal, um, and I'm I'm uncertain that I would be wanting to delegate that away to a committee from our board. Uh, I I think that some aspects of what you've talked about here are useful to have a standing committee doing. Uh, it would be more, I think, a capital planning committee or a space allocation or space needs committee. Uh, I, I do think that looking at our history of how we've handled um, building projects, there are ways that, that maybe having an overview committee uh, would be helpful. But I, uh, I'm not the idea of having a standing building committee that is the committee that oversees every construction project that we do, uh, I'm not very comfortable with that. Okay. I, I'm willing to work with Becky to come up with a, with a compromise proposal or, or something. Gary and I thought this was important and we brought it forward, but we'll I, work with the selectmen. I would like to hear from the rest of the board what their initial thoughts are on this. I mean, I, a capital planning committee, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, a, and a committee that has a sense of where the spaces are, where, you know, that are un, underutilized, where, where the buildings are that are needing attention. Um, I, I'm just not, I think that when we get to actually doing a major building project, we would want a committee that is, Handpicked for that project to oversee. That's what that. we've been doing in the past. That's what I, we've done. I in know the past. that's how we have done recent construction, and I think that part of how we've done recent construction has probably been successful. That's why I'm I'm less excited about having a standing committee. Understood. But but I think some of the overview, the capital planning, and the sort of being aware of you know we've got this, and I'm not going to well. You know, we've got the fire station over there in West Groton that is, um, it's sort of, its future is a little bit uncertain and we're, so, you know, some overview that's looking at all of our properties I think is useful. Uh, anyone care to comment uh, as Becky's looking for that? Jack? So um, my guess is that the vision for this building committee would, and what it looks like and, and its purview would be substantially different than what we know of building committees to date. But there would likely be a fair amount of overlap with what we see in building committees today. And, and of the building committee work that we see today, there is a lot of consistent committee to committee repetition. So I see some value in having some form of standing entity because the learning between two building committees is unnecessary. There's a, a learning curve that is just inefficient and there's value in, in having that transition. So I think I'm in favor of this as long as we can have each committee be purpose built and customized to the purpose of, of the initiative, but uh, still take advantage of a standing committee that retains knowledge and practice. Anything better? Yeah, so um, as the FinCom liaison, uh, Gary mentioned this, I think after one of our budget meetings when I stayed late to, to talk to FinCom. And in principle, I agreed with the ideas. Um, and I think that there's a lot of merit in a committee who, who is tasked with maintaining and, and understanding the inventory of the buildings we have in town, kind of projecting with the future vision of what's there, what might be needed, how things are changing as their only role, right? I mean, there's so many other people we have in town, there's so many other uh, focuses, but when you have a committee that's tasked with a more streamlined vision of this is, this is the role, they can focus on that and even if different committee members parceled out different buildings and, and looked after those or quote unquote looked after but um, so I think there's some value there um, I, I think I heard from 
uh, Member Pine that uh, she's not secure in the idea that, that at that point they should oversee a major building project and, and for a new project. So they've identified a parcel or identified a building needs to be replaced or a need in the town that is being met by a building and, we, and they, they recommend a new project. I might see at that point a schism in duties where a committee could focus just on a project. Because if you look back at the work that the Building Center Committee has done and the work that the Fire Committee did, that's a full-time commitment a lot and, of and focus. Yep. And you're not going to be able to focus on the other aspects of the jobs, the roles of the committee during that time, in my opinion. I, don't, I think it would be very difficult. If we have Herculean volunteers, <laughs> they would do it, of course. But I don't think it's reasonable to ask that of a committee of such ways. There's, you know, there's a guiding committee and a recommendation committee, and then it's up to us at that point to say, we, we concur with your recommendations, or the town concurs with your recommendations, let's make a, a, a committee to, to really go after this idea with feed from that, that committee. And maybe if one member of that committee is particularly responsible for a particular subsection of fire and safety, then that member might also be involved because of the expertise, as Jack said, to carry that forward. Um, so I think that this, this, this policy has some very good things in it. I just think maybe it just needs a few tweaks to, to make it um, procedurally more appropriate. I'm good cool with that. I'll, I'll, I'd like to work with Becky on it. Allison? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I agree with what I've heard so far. The other kind of quandary or question I had is, is how much this committee would take away from the parks with, you know, the, where this currently includes recreation structures, playing fields, and courts. And to me, we kind of already have an entity that, that masterminds that. I'm not sure we need to replicate that, but. Good point. Especially you know, since they're an elected body. Excuse me. Right. It, it, but I mean, I conceptually, I think this is a, a good idea that just needs some, some kind of refinement and thinking through. OK. Um, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So my comments on this is uh, I agree with Barry uh, very much so. It's almost like he did a Vulcan mind meld and, and sucked out the information from my brain. But uh, I very much agree with what you said. That's what hurts. Yeah, I know. Maybe it does. <laughs> um, but, but I think that I from what I can see, we have a tremendous amount of assets in this town, from Prescott School to this building to two DPW garages, a senior center, a library, and, and every other building I missed, Legion Hall, and all the ones that I have Lost not Lake. touched on. Lost Lake Fire Station, Main <laughs> Fire Station, all the police station, all of these structures. There's a lot of assets. And all of these assets really need to be evaluated. And I see a need for a permanent, permanent building committee to assess what the capital needs and the infrastructure improvements that are going to be needed at all of these <coughs> facilities moving forward. Where I don't necessarily agree with this would be, say we have a new major initiative such as the senior center and we want to do something like that. I think that having a standalone committee for a new project would be a great idea, which could include membership from the permanent building committee on it. Um, so I think that this has um, got the ingredients in the bowl, and you're still tasting it to see you know, what's missing. Um, well, that's so, why I want to bring it in, so in advance. Yeah. I, I think it's a great idea, and I think it just needs to be tweaked. Sure. We could do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on Thursday, April 19th, we opened the construction bids for the uh, Senior Center. I've given you, if you go to page um, uh, 13 in your uh, package, you'll see a copy of the, the bidders. Uh, the low bid came from Nelco Construction, the amount of $4,765,999. There was an issue with, the, um, with one of the sub bidders, so we're going to need to carry $4.8 the, uh, the sub bidder on glass and glaze came in with a bid that we think he missed a zero on. And we think he's going to withdraw the bid because 4500 was his bid and everybody else was 40000 and above. So we think he missed a zero. Um, so we, we're just going to carry, we're just going to carry the extra money. So if, if you look up here on the screen, you can see what we're anticipating the cost of the project to be. Construction, $4.8 million, um, which we're very excited about. The contingency, 5%. Furnishings and equipment, 150. The clerk of the works, 100,000. Uh, our architect for construction management, we have a bid on that already at 79. And then OPM services, which we're required to have by law, at 62. I am working with town council and the architect on the OPM issue, so we may see a reduction of 62,000. But I, I don't have an update for you tonight on that. So we're going to be asking town meeting for $5,431,000. Um, like I said, if you go to page 13, 
um, in your packets, you'll see um, the bids. And you can see they're very, very competitive. We did receive uh, 14 bids uh, with a high bid of 5,489,000. I wanted to take a quick second to explain to you what the alternates that you see on the, uh, on the right hand side is. You'll see a minus 70,499 and a minus 94,199. When, we, when the senior center building committee put the, the bid out, they took two items that they would like to have in the bid, but they put them as deduct alternates. And uh, deduct alternate one is the canopy that would go over the, the driveway when people drive up so that they're covered. And then deduct alternate two would be a generator for the building. So we put those as deducts in the event that the committee wanted to take those out to bring the cost of the project down. You would have to take both of them. You can't take one and not the other. You'd have to take them in, in order. So you'd have to take the canopy first, and then you'd have to take the, uh, the um, uh, generator second. What, those really? numbers are included in the 4.765 number. Is that, is that the law? That's the law. You can't decide to deduct number two without nope. deducting number one? You've got to take them in the order that they presented. That is, that's how bidding works and that's how the law works. So here's the interesting part, though. If the building committee had taken and decided to deduct both those alternates from the bid, the second, second bidder becomes a low bidder by $10,000. Right. I just saw that. Yeah. So the building committee voted to recommend to town meeting to stay with those two items because they felt the bid came in where they wanted it to come in for the project. Except for if you take a $40,000 change, now that bid is $50,000 below the other one. No, no, no. Once you award the bid, change orders are, are different. Wait, wait, wait. What we said was we suspect that there was a glazer error oh. in the sub bid, yep. which means that we already suspect there's a $40,000 variance in the first bid. Correct. If I raise that first bid by $40,000, yep. And then I then I get then I have an original delta of ten thousand. I'm now fifty thousand dollars different. No, but now, I'm not saying that's material. No, but both of them would have to take that. They both I, have to raise all the forty thousand. All the oh, it's all, oh, all, all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has to take all the bidders. all the sub bidders they carried that forty five hundred bucks. All the bidders carried that forty five hundred in their bid. It would affect all the bids equally. Okay, 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 across okay. the board. Okay, yeah. thank you. But so we're very excited about about the project, and right now we're doing our due diligence. And we're checking with Nelco. I called Greg before the meeting tonight to find out if he had more information, and they're still doing their reference checks. So hopefully by the end of this week, we'll know that Nelco um, is is reasonable. Don and I did a quick look online, and they seem to have a really good reputation. So I'm hoping that all the reference checks and all the stuff that they have to do by the architect comes back. Go ahead, Josh. Say whatever you're thinking. <laughs> um, so that's that's the uh, that's the, the 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 bid process. Now there's is, a question. Is there something you know that we don't know? That like He's going to make fun of me, I think. I was not going to make fun of you. <laughs> you had nothing to do with this. Oh, okay. Nothing to share. Okay. Um, I'm curious yes. as to how why anyone thought that not having the generator was would ever be a possibility. The generator, the, because some buildings don't have generators, some buildings do have generators. This particular building right now, the senior center. Has has a generator, uh -huh. um, but moving forward, you know they're trying to keep the cost down for the for the taxpayers. If it didn't have a generator and the power went out, we we close it. But we've made it into a um, into a an emergency shelter, so you want to have that generator. Well, I mean, I thought that was one of the very it high is. criteria for it that is. and needs for that building. Absolutely so why is. would anyone ever consider not having it? Looking at the prices, Becky, solely based on bids. Can I answer that? Please. Because a generator, you don't need a generator. The reasoning was because you don't need a generator to have a senior center. You need a generator to have an emergency shelter, which is what we want. It was the ideal and what we were aiming for. But in case those bids came in too high, something had to go. And that, that's why. It wasn't really what we wanted. It was just keeping the options open. Which makes sense. Um, so based on, based on that, the building committee voted to um, recommend to town meeting and the selectmen the low bid at 4765 with the additional 35000 for 4.8, and the numbers that we gave you. So we'll be asking town meeting for $5,431,000. Now, a couple of things that are important on the $5,431,000. The um, committee is going through a fundraising process right now. 
any money raised will lower the amount we permanently finance. So this is the maximum amount of money we would bond for this project. So say the building committee is able to go out and bond, uh, save, you know, raise 500,000 towards the project. When we permanently finance, we'd only permanently finance 4.9 million dollars. But they don't know what that final number is. They're gonna be doing the fundraising over the next year. The town is going to temporarily bond the 5.4 until such time as we permanently finance it. So basically that's why if you look at the schedules that I'm putting up on what the impact to the average taxpayer is, the first year payment is only on interest because we're not permanently bonding the, 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 uh, the bond. And this is the maximum amount. Now there's two ways we can do this. There are two ways to do this. You can do level debt service or level principal. What you see before you here is a level debt service payment in which every year the payments are roughly the same amount of money and the impact on the tax bill is the same every year. So you would see an $89 or $90 impact on the average tax bill for the life of the 25 years. The other way is the level principal payment where the principal payment is the same each year and then the interest goes down as the principal gets paid. Think about the way you do a mortgage and the debt service would be higher and then drop substantially in future years. That's something we'd have to decide moving forward. But you can, you can say, based on these numbers, that the average impact to residents over 25 years is about $90 a year on average. So that's the project. And I, I have to tell you, I'm very excited that the, um, you know, the building committee came out and said they were going to design a building uh, at um, under 11,000 square feet. They did that. They came in and said they'd try to bring in a building between four and a half and five million dollars. They did that. You know, total project costs, soft costs, engineering, all that does raise the, the price up to 5.4. But this, if you'll all remember, the original estimates from two years ago when this started was 6.9 million. Mm -hmm. And so it has come down. They've done a really good job refining the program and meeting the needs of the seniors in the town. So I'm excited and I'm recommending enthusiastically that the selectmen support this project going forward. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Question. Peter's here and Kathy's here. I just have a question initially on the interest uh, rate um, that you're carrying coupons of 5 and 4 percent in the first scenario and yep. you're carrying coupon rates of the same in the second. Um, this seems to be a municipal project. Isn't that a high rate? Uh, that's what the current, the average coupon is 4 percent. That's what the average uh, for AAA bond the communities is right now, and that's what they base it on. Okay, and the second thing that's worth noting is a delta of $450,000 in interest by using the second scenario while you have upfront costs and increases to the tax bill uh, on the higher end as opposed to the level uh, end. There really is a $450,000 savings using the second debt service oh, absolutely. schedule. Absolutely. Um, so I'd like to see before this goes, uh, especially to town meeting, especially since the finance committee's meeting, I'd like their recommendation on this. Yep. Um, and I know that uh, that is not dealing with uh, the- I always like level costs. principle. I like level principle over level debt. It, it, there, and that's sometimes okay. I think you have to also do an analysis based on net present value of the money that you're gonna be spending. That's true. Um, because if this is a 20 year, 20, 20, 15 year situation? The 25 years. 25 year situation. Yep. You know, when you when you adjust for inflation, if you're doing levels debt, that money's actually worth, worth uh, it's worth m more now than it is in the future. So you're not quite, you're not really paying for, I mean, you're paying dollars, but the value of those dollars as it goes forward may be different than what you think. Yep. Because, you know, the, the taxpayers get more from it, or you can get more for the money elsewhere. Rather than rather than uh, consuming it, so there's some good calculations to be run based on MPV and uh, FPV. Yep, Peter. Yeah, I would just add or add to that. I think the other the other consideration too is at the time you're you're going to actually go out and do the long term borrowing on this, these schedules are going to change. It's yeah. not going to be the same. This is simply, I think, an ex uh, you know, an attempt to get a, an example of what it might look like or potential impact. Uh, but I think the real numbers uh, for whatever debt schedule. Uh, you know, we'll enter into is going to be you know significantly different uh, two years down the road when we go we'll long-term market. Yep. Exactly. 
Um, I, I would also, if I may, just add quickly, the, the other thing that was very, I think, impressive about the bids we received, if you, if you notice, uh, the delta between the first bidder and, let's say, going down to number six is uh, in the area of $230,000. So, so the numbers were very, very tight, the way it was bid, which I think gave the committee confidence that these are, are good numbers going forward and we shouldn't be hopefully dealing with uh, change orders and things like that. Everybody was pretty much calling it the same way, which is, which is I think, a good, you know, good outcome. Um, Becky, then Jack. So, this is probably a dumb question, but um, if we're not bonding it permanently for a year or so, do we have to borrow this entire amount? You know, that's a good year? question. What happens, we talked about this, as a matter of fact, Mike and I and Patricia met with our bond advisor, was it last Wednesday or Thursday, to talk about this very issue and when it makes sense to, to borrow the money. What's going to happen if town meeting approves this and it passes the, the, um, and it passes the debt exclusion on May 22nd, when we get into negotiations and we sign a contract with the low bidder, the first thing they have to do is give us a drawdown schedule, which tells us when they will need the money. The treasurer will borrow the money as he needs to bring it in. It may be advantageous to borrow it all at the same time based on interest rates. It may be advantageous to borrow in quarter, you know, in, in quarters and things like that. That's something, Becky, that we'll decide once okay. the once we're we're ready to go. Do you do you anything Absolutely. you want to add to that? That's what we discussed with our bond advisor. And then I had another question. Yep. Um, and I think it's important whatever the answer to this question is, it's gonna be important to get this out publicly and say it over and over. The fundraising. Yep. The fundraising is only going to reduce the cost. It is not going to be fundraising so that more can be no, built. No, no, no. This is the project, Becky. Yeah. I, I have understood project. that, but I want yeah. that really said often because people need to understand that. Yeah. So this this uh, five five point four five point four is the maximum Correct. that we will spend as a town on Correct. this pro on this project. You know, unless there's some horrible, disastrous problem. We'd have to go back to town meeting. That comes, and yeah. we would have to go back. I hope that doesn't happen. All right. Thank Peter, you. do you have a follow up on that? Or not? Uh, no, I mean, I think the question is answered. 5.4 5. will be the maximum amount that can be uh, spent on the project because you need the authorization in order to, to pay the bills and, and to pay the, uh, you know, the contractors. So you need that number. Um, if some of that number is offset by private fundraising, which we believe it will be, then we won't need to spend that much money or, or borrow that much money. Uh, but 5.4 is the maximum for the project. Uh, Jack, then Barry. So in the two funding scenarios, in the level debt scenario, um, I'm sorry, Jack. there's roughly a $90 a year impact to taxpayers every year. Um, and as Barry points out, that actual impact becomes effectively less over time. But it takes 11 years under the level it's it uh, principal only, or whatever the second scenario. It takes 11 years to get the average impact below the $90 threshold. And so I think that in terms of you know, one of the big things here for people is what's, what's the impact to me in my wallet? What, what do I have to pay new? And I think that the people that this is going to impact the most are the people who are here now rather than people who move into our town. And so when I think about these two scenarios, I think about the first one being easier to swallow. Um, and, uh, and so I, f I far prefer the first one over the second one, regardless of what the, the overall debt payment or um, interest payment might be. But I, I do, and I hear what you're saying, but it's a $25 difference in year one, which is the highest difference uh, for the average home. And the way I see it is if it's $25 in year one and it continues to reduce, and we can overall save $450,000 in interest. To me, that's something that, well, I can do the math quickly, and you can do the math, and I don't dispute our mathematic skills, but I'm not a long-term dollar cost averaging person moving forward to the future. That's why it might be worth asking the Finance Committee what their recommendation would be. Who, who are we saving the interest? The taxpayer? Taxpayer, right. I, 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 I will wager that at the last 10 years of this payment, we will have 30%, 20% different taxpayers than we have today. Meaning, I think the, the big savings will be in the first 10 years of this, the big impact taxpayers will be in the first 10 years of this. 
After that, we start to taxpayers start to cycle through, and uh, as Barry points out, the net present value of this payment becomes um, diluted. Okay. It's a matter of perspective. Yeah, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, it is absolutely. I, I absolutely get it. Is, yeah. I get it. Um, any f further questions for uh, the building committee, senior center committee? Anything? I, 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 I'd Peter, it's okay to go ahead and speak if you have something to say. I don't mean to interrupt I'm just going to make a shameless plug. But go ahead. All right. So uh, <laughs> uh, all of the previous funds that have been expended uh, for feasibility studies yep. and um, uh, uh, architecture fees yep. have all come out of free cash. Is that accurate? They did. So there was no impact on new taxes on that. Yeah. It came from Because previous taxes. I know. There was impact, but OK. No new impact. But we do not intend to replenish free cash by bonding that money. Nope. Can't. That's part of this. OK. Uh, shameless plug there? Sure. I, and, and just to uh, talk a little bit about the private fundraising effort that is underway. Uh, we've had uh, a very uh, positive response. We've reached out to um, you know donors that we think could, could contribute a lot. Um, obviously, what they need is a commitment from the town that, in fact, the town's going to go forward with this. I think once we have that, we're going to be able to really you know, you know rock and roll going forward. Uh, but for folks that are interested, there is a fund that's been set up. The Friends of the Groton Elders have established a building fund. Uh, and contributions can be made uh, to that fund uh, to help offset the project. And anyone that needs more information, can get in touch with the, uh, you know, the senior center, or certainly can get in touch with me. Um, Friends of the Groton Elders. Correct. Friends of the Groton Elders is a 501c3 that's been established for a number of years to support activities at the senior center, and they've set up a separate, uh, you know, building fund for this project. Okay, so they have a sub cap, sub account just for correct. This, so yep. Thank you. And can I just ask one question on that? Does that building fund then, <clears throat> is it required that it must be spent all down to zero? The, the building fund? The fund that the Friends of the Groton Elders have set up. Well, it's going, it's going towards the building, so, so right, yes, I mean, I mean, we're not. No. All contributions will go to the building. All contributions Correct. will go to this building. It won't be, become a standing fund no, that gets kept. No, they have other funds for other activities. Okay. They have a fuel Thank assistance you. fund. They have uh, funds to support fund. programming and, and stuff. But this is a building but fund for the building. But this is specifically for this project. And we're representing, and we've represented right. on numerous occasions that the intent of doing this is to help you know, defray the cost of this building. Right. So, so what will end up happening is whatever they raise. We wouldn't want to bogart money the, and keep it you, aside and not use it towards the building. At the end of the fundraising period, they will turn, the Friends of the Elders will turn that over to the selectmen, go into a gift account, and project costs will be charged against it. We'll go back to town meeting, we'll reduce the bond authorization, and we'll only bond what we need to bond. That's how it'll work. Thank you. Jack. So this has been a long, frustrating, contentious process, and a difficult one. And I know there's been a lot of challenges along the way, and it, I, I am certain that it caused a lot of stress. Um, but I have to say that from where we were however many years ago when this first started to where we are now in terms of cost, sort of the buttoned up nature of it, and the fact that you brought this in almost to the dime of what you predicted, and the narrowness of the bids across however many, 11? 14. 14 bids um, is a testament to effort and persistence. So thank you very much. And I think it's a job well done. Um, and I probably didn't get through as much as you did along the way. Um, I'm glad that it's behind us, but it seems like it was worth it. Thanks. Well, I, I appreciate that, and uh, we'll all live to see it, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, probably an important thing, yeah. It'll be behind us. Uh, right, right, which would be good. But, uh, <laughs> but I, really, I really have to give uh, uh, a, lot of, uh, you know, a lot of thanks, I think, to the committee. The committee worked very, very hard on this. And we also were very fortunate, I think, in engaging uh, an architect to help design this who has connections with the community and also really wanted to see this work and had some really innovative uh, ideas on how to approach some of the challenges we faced. So. Uh, He'll have a good presentation in town meeting. Under seven minutes, but it, it'll be a good presentation. <laughs> uh, we'll be at the senior center uh, tomorrow night at tomorrow 7 o'clock. Anybody that wants to come out and see the presentation, we did it Saturday. Had a great turnout, great response from people, uh, what they saw. So come and see us tomorrow night. I'll ask the selectman if you're going to support the article. In a moment. OK. Having reviewed uh, your minutes and attended one or two of your meetings over the period of time, the perseverance and the hard work that all of your committee members put in was tremendous because you ran into pitfalls, you ran into problems, um, just like any major building project. But you persevered, you worked hard, you proved your point, and you worked collaboratively and collectively together. So I just want to thank your entire committee. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, now, may I ask if the board would like to support this article? Uh, we have not taken positions yet because we were waiting for the bid opening. Um, Jack? 
I'll just say, you know, this could come under discussion. I guess it is a discussion. I want to see what your um, your background checks on the proposed bidder. You'll have to buy Monday, Jeff. Yeah, I just haven't gone through the fire station one. I'm yep. reluctant to support something until we've heard that. Understood. Understood, Jack. I didn't you know, see, them, I I didn't see, see them on this list. No, but can I tell you something that's really funny? Um, you see in the general bids, they get to exclude contractors they don't want to work with and everything, and sub bidders get to do that. TLT's been out of business for four years. They're still on excluded list, Jack. It's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, any other selectmen care to take a position at this juncture? Well, pending, uh, pending. A, 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 a positive background check, uh, I'm in favor. As am I. As, yes. As am I. Right. Okay. Excellent. So, Jack, you're at a time meeting, or would you yeah. want to go along with that one? No, I, I, I want to button this up. Understood. I understand Jack's. Having Jack was the chairman of the building committee when we, I understand Jack's issue, but <laughs> I feel confident on Nelco, but we'll, we'll find out. So I, 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 I understand Jack. Why do you Jack. feel confident on Nelco? Huh? Why do you feel confident? I just, I just have a good feeling. Plus my, my yeah, research I'm assistant. I'm changing my vote to be on town meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> my research assistant did a good background check on it. But just, could you review what the process is if they, the re the references come back not so good. Second we low reject, bidder. Yeah, we reject it. We go to the second low bidder, which drives the cost of the project of $125,000. Okay. And that'll be in the motion. We won't. When we go to town meeting next Monday, I'll know that Nelco is the firm. Yeah. Greg will get it to me this week, and I'll let the board know as soon as I hear from Greg. But preliminary, you know, their DCAM certification, I looked at it. Excellent. Their references on DCAM, they had a high score. Uh, on the DCAM rating, it was over 90, which is which is also excellent. Um, so I'm I'm feeling really good about them uh, as as a firm. So, but I, I understand I understand. You have okay. to cross our T's, dot our I's. Thank you. Moving right along, uh, Mr. Chairman, as the board is aware, the Bolter versus Board of Selectmen Whaling case has impacted the way the board conducts the annual review of the town manager. The board's current policy that was drafted based on the original interpretation of the open meeting law by the Attorney General has been ruled to be in violation of the open meeting law by the SJC. Now, I've given you the Attorney General's new guidance relative to the uh, reviews of public officials conducted by public bodies, and I've uh, discussed this with the chair, and we believe the best way to address last year's annual review is to just release your individual evaluations this year. And then next year, what we're gonna do is update the policy, and if you go to page uh, 17 uh, in your packets, you will see the Attorney General's guidance, and then you will see a revised policy where uh, Town Council has taken that new guidance and put it into your um, and put it into your your policy. So what will happen next year is when you do your individual evaluations, you will turn them over to the HR director, and the HR director will work with the chair to do the final evaluation. This year, because you all turned them into Josh, we can't do that. So Josh and I said, you know something, instead of risking a challenge or anything else, just release the individual reviews. So with the board's permission, if the board so votes, we will do that tonight. And then I'd ask the board to adopt the new policy. Okay, um, I think you gave a good overview of this whole thing. But the board has its policies and procedures. So we are going to need to waive uh, or vote on waiving our policy and procedure, in my opinion, I agree. Um, in order to release, uh, with the town manager's permission, the five individual uh, selectmen reviews at this juncture, because we do have a policy, and to deviate from that's going to require us to take a vote on that. Okay. Um, and it seems every time that I'm chair, I'm tasked with having major problems with doing your review for one reason or another. Um, you have yet to do a compilation, John. <laughs> this, and this one, again, is not of my doing. None, none um, whatsoever. So um, that said, anybody may, yes, Jack. So as part of the review process, we today would have gotten the compilation. We wouldn't have seen it ahead of time. Correct. We've gotten it, read it, and we would have talked about it in a follow-up meeting. Correct. We would Correct. Have That's the process. It. Yep. And um, if we waive this process, it, we should waive it. But uh, I think we should waive it. But still have the process where we review the individual documents and then come back for a follow-on and have a scheduled agenda item on a follow-on meeting to discuss our thoughts. Yeah, we could have. 
I suppose that would be one way of doing it. Yeah, because one way or another, we're supposed to publicly discuss the process. I'm concerned. Right? I, I understand Jack's point, but we'd have to hand out the five individual evaluations. You'll see it for the first time at a public meeting, right? We're supposed to get there. Are we supposed to get those? I, I don't have them to, to tonight. I was just going to ask the board if you want me to release the individual reviews. I'll just make them public documents what, what, yeah. immediately. What, what I would. We've referenced them tonight. They're effect, effectively public documents here. Well, as that was the night. Yeah. And so I think they can be distributed to the board, read during the interim, and then discussed at the, whatever the subsequent meeting so, is. Yeah, so I would suggest that you take each one of the reviews that was done, uh, send them off after we vote to waive our policy to each selectman, as well as make them available for the public. Sure. And then I don't want to discuss this in the cafeteria. No, the next time you have a public okay, meeting. Okay, uh, right before town meeting, because we've had complaints that the public and no television or anything. So the next regularly scheduled televised meeting of the Board of Selectmen outside of town meeting is when we should take those. But please distribute those, and they will become public documents they're public the moment documents. they're distributed. So if anybody wants a copy of them, they can request them of the uh, from the town manager's office. No, sure. no, no, I was no. going to say, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to file them in the office of the town clerk. Town, we'll save yourself some work. So they'll be in the town clerk's office, and I'll send them to you, and anybody who wants a copy can get it from the town clerk. So would anybody like to make a motion to uh, waive the provisions of the uh, board policy on the town manager's evaluation and release the individual selectmen reviews and bring them forward for discussion at the next televised meeting? So moved. Thank uh, you. Should the motion refer to it, it, in, in following the law? <laughs> in light of the Bolter versus Board right. Select and Wayland case. Amend it. Yeah. In light of it. Thank you for referencing that. Mm -hmm. You got that? Mm -hmm. John, John has you want to adopt page, that right? as your motion? Yeah. Sure. Jack's adopted that, including in light of that. Thank you. Uh, motion on the floor? Is Second. it made? Seconded? Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Does the board want to adopt town, man, uh, town council's uh, recommended changes? Has, then this will pass muster with yes. the new guidance. This is based on the new guidance of the Attorney General. So I confess that I didn't really read this because I thought this was just the old existing policy it, that it, I didn't need to read. Um, so skimming it right now, it sounds kind of strange, like we hand in our individual evaluations to the HR director, yep. who then turns around and hands them back yes, to this to the correct. chair to write the compilation. Right now, what's the difference? Let me no, we have a year to do this if you want. No, no, the, this is really simple. Please, having having dealt with this for a number of months now, unfortunately, um, the problem is that the way that you folks did this was to send me your individual reviews via email. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is where the issue lies in the Wayland case. Yeah. So if you had sent them to the HR director, because they are not, she is not an elected official, and she turns them over directly to me, and she's a confidential employee who handles confidential information, that does not violate the open meeting law. And so then you still write a compilation. I do the exact thing that this said, but it's just a different delivery method rather than you as individual selectmen having sent it to me. Oh, okay. So this year is going to be different because we're not going to write the compilation. We're just going to release the individual review, so they're public documents, so there's no tainted. violation. Because it's already tainted, tainted. Yes, I it's see. it's tainted already. But in the future, there will be the compilation. And I, okay. I really want to stress to the board that the Attorney General's original guidance is how Town Council drafted your original policy. Oh, yes. Know. So this, don't, I don't want Town Council to be blamed for this because it's no. not his fault, it's the Attorney General's fault. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm not prepared to argue this, but I'll just note that effectively what we're doing is having an employee wash documents in the public meeting, in the open meeting law process, which I'm, I'm told is impossible to do, that you, you, you can't wander an open meeting communication through an individual. Now, I would just ask you, I'm, I'm prepared to vote for this, but I would just ask you to go back and ask town council if they are sure that that is effectively what happens. We could do that. I have no problem putting off the vote on this. Pending. I can bring the I can bring this policy back because next December because we took care of the review and the release, and we'll put that on at the uh, same meeting where we discuss Indian Hill. So that should be a fun night. Um, Full already. Don't put anything else on. Okay. <laughs> I was say it looks like in the the memo that we got from MMA. That's the MMA's memo. Right. It it 
specifies that that compilation needs to come from the employee to the chair in an open session. Yep. So that a little bit changes the... Come from the employee? Wait. The employee so the HR director can gather them up and then... Deliver it to the chair and during an open meeting. Hold on. What you just said is the compilation needs to come from the employee. No. So just the... the Individual... Batch. Oh, the batch. Aggregation. The batch. Okay. The batch. <laughs> Okay. As paper rather than in, is that the deal? We need clarification. We'll get clarification. Well, you can't give it to me at an open meeting unless she sends me an email from the chair over there. I mean, that's I don't get it. They have to be. I never realized how hard it is to review me. I mean, I thought I was a pretty good employee, but this is turning into a disaster. <laughs> Um, it's not all about you. <laughs> no, it's the process. No, I know that. Not attorney general. Okay, so. Um, Stay tuned. And Mr. Chairman, that's all I have on um, on the, the, the town manager's report under other business. Um, I would like to, if it's okay, while I'm while I'm still talking, uh, address items number two and three under other business, the town meeting and definitely postponing consideration of the CPA application. Can I take that up first? Is there any concern that we're forty minutes past our public hearing? Yeah, we now? skipped our public hearing. Oh boy. Oh wow. Oh, that's so not good. It's <coughs> seven thirty central time. Um, thank so, you, Allison, for uh, pointing out how incompetent I was. I was there at the same time. I'm like, I know. Wait. Yes, thank you for uh, catching that. So we Please go to page 21 of your pack. Thank you. With apologies um, to any public who may have been here for a public hearing on starting at 7.30. I got all discombobulated, and I apologize. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with Chapter 83 of the Mass General Laws uh, and the Town of Groton Usage Fee Regulations, the Board of Selectmen acting as the sewer commissioners for the Four Corners Sewer District will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at the Town Hall, 173 Main Street, to consider adopting uh, sewer regulations, rates, and fees associated with the Four Corners Sewer District. Um, I would ask the Board of Selectmen to open the public hearing. Could you sign that? You need a motion to open the public hearing? Chair. I'm sorry. Second. Do we need a motion to open yes. the public hearing? I, we're just trying so to get moved. something straight. Motion to open the public hearing. It's been seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is open. Mr. Anderson. Chairman, before you, in your packet, beginning on page 22. Apologies, we have some confusion over who signed what documents. Everybody says they've signed this, but there's four signatures on here. I don't think Allison has signed it. Allison's Allison pointing her Mine signature. Mine is actually legible, thank you. <laughs> Becky what? and Barry have signed this. Jack, you have not signed he this. He says this. Can I, I think I see If you don't want to sign it, you don't have to. He says he signs it. Right I think okay. there are five signatures right there. Jack's is right here. I think Go simple ahead. arithmetic yeah. is not as easy as you think it is. All five were good. You need to borrow some fingers. Um, <laughs> apologize. <laughs> Mr. Tom Manager, would you please explain? Yes, the Mr. Chairman, as you know, we, are, uh, we have a new sewer district. Uh, the sewer district has been tested and is ready to go, and we're hoping to have the, uh, the first people hooked up and ready to flush on May 1st. Oh, uh, therefore, in order to, um, in order to uh, build them and, and, and run the operation, the regulations have to be adopted. Now, I know the question is going to be, well, we, we're postponing consideration of the bylaw. Town Council, Josh and I talked to him today. You can adopt the regulations, and then you can do the bylaw. It doesn't matter which comes first, the chicken or the egg. So because I want these to be effective May 1st, we're bringing these regulations to you uh, that outline the, the manner in which the um, in which the sewer district will, will build the users, uh, the end users of the uh, facility. Um, these were drafted um, by Jim Geminer and myself. Jim has reviewed them and signed off on them. The sewer commission has not taken a formal vote, but I reviewed them separately with a separate commissioner, and he has also um, does not have an issue with these regulations and recommends uh, approval by the board. Um, the fees are going to be and the rates are going to be the exact same rates that we charge in the center sewer district. So the, the fees and the rates and all of the fees that you see are the same um, here. So we're doing 844 a unit for 0 to 15 units, 1466, 16 to 30 units, 31 to 45 units will be 16, 13 a unit. So it's, it's tiered the same way that the, uh, the uh, center district is, is done now. Yes, Jack? Um, so I, I looked for it, but I didn't see anything about the ability to waive a fee. Is there These are the regulations. Um, the, the only way a fee would get, a fee can't be waived within here. 
There are no fee waivers. Is that because it's stated that they can't be waived, or is it because it's not stated that they can be waived? It's not stated that they can be waived. I got to ask you. Yep. We've waived fees before where there was no statement that they could or couldn't be waived. The selectmen or the sewer commission would, according to our charter amendment, would have to hold a public hearing and amend your regulations to waive the fees. Right now, there are no fee waivers. According, I, I suggest that we address the issue here in the regulations so that we're, we don't have that very awkward possibility come to us. We can, we can add a section in here and mirror what's written in the charter and add it as a, as a provision what's within here. What's written in the charter is that, well, that we will have, if it's proposed, that we will have, actually what's written in the charter is that for any particular fee, in this case a sewer fee, a connection fee, um, the board or the sewer commission, whoever is responsible for it, will be allowed to waive a fee if they X and Y and Z. You have to have a public hearing on it, yeah. and then it's a standing, uh, a standing issue. Like I said, we could add that to but this. But it has right. to be available to anyone, right? Well, all I'm saying is, in our regulation, we should address the possibility of waiving fees. Good point. And then we can decide what, how we want to handle that. So, do you want to add another section under um, so kind of between 396.22 and 396.23, calling it a uh, fee waiver? Sure. Or? Well, is there such a thing in the bylaw for the uh, center sewer? Well, let me, ask, let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Jack, 396.24. It already says it right there. The Sewer Commission may in any particular instance waive strict compliance with the application of these regulations. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't do, see that. Do you want me to expand that section? No, if that can be read to apply to fees. Yeah, absolutely. Then, fees are part of the regulation. Then, then it's there. I apologize. I looked and didn't see. Uh, I I'm sorry. It didn't come to me until I went but back that, and looked at it. But then that raises the question, does that sentence, is that legal it, with what the charter revision says? Um, well, it, yes, because well, we'd have to, we're having a public hearing where we're adopting a regulation to waive fees. The charter says we have to have a public hearing to adopt a regulation to waive fees. And that's what this does. It has to have been held in public hearing and available in writing for anyone to see. Those are the two, two requirements. Okay. I, should have been, I should have been aware of that. I apologize. Oh, I should have been aware of it. It was available for me to see, but um, I didn't see it in my review. Does that satisfy your concern? Yeah. Okay. So then it, I have a again, question please. about, um, and maybe you don't know the answer. Uh, the the town center sewer, uh, the rates are based on water usage, but my belief has always been that anybody on the town center sewer also has town water, so they have a meter that's um, calculating. Yep. This, as it's written, implies that maybe there are people, but there isn't. Town no, water. everybody, everybody up there has town water. I think that just covers any, any issue. But this is but all they still covers water. under. They all have town water. They all have town water up there. Yeah. Okay. It still covers under three ninety six thirty four B, where you have, regardless if they have town water or not, wastewater flow meters may be required. Um, right. No, I w I just yep. was wondering whether this was going to be the first instance of having someone on sewer who was not also on water, but. Water is up in the district. That's not true. Okay. Barry? So one of the original intents of the project to spawn the grant was that the funds that the taxpayers were going to appropriate to do the pre-work to make a shovel ready would be uh, reconsumed by the tax, by the, uh, would be replenished or to the taxpayers through connection fees. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that seems to be missing from this entire regulation. Um, and I'm a little frustrated by that because part of the commitment, part of the discussion that happened at town meeting was that our goal would be to, as a result of having a really, 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 really cheap sewer built, there wouldn't be a need to, to exact exorbitant fees from the businesses that would use that sewer. So I would like to see, this is missing that. I can't see it. I, I've, looked through the, I've looked through the regulations. I've looked through this water unit. I haven't found anything to say, plus a portion of the original build fees or nothing like that. So it's just kind of an open schedule, and without understanding that open schedule, and if, I guess we're now we're going to be the first commissioners. If I'm going to set that fee, I'm going to set it based on a 200 and what was it, 300,000, 280,000, 180,000. You mean 280,000 of the engineering fees? Yeah. 
yep. and say, okay, you know, how many businesses are we gonna do we plan to get and I'm gonna proportion that out over ten years or something like that. So I wanna I wanna see something like that in the schedule because that was the commitment we made at town meeting so that they would take the risk to make a shovel ready project. The commitment was we would pay three hundred thousand dollars towards engineering to secure a two point two million dollar grant. That was the commitment and that's what we did. Now two businesses within that district contributed one hundred and sixty thousand dollars towards the towards the project. That's covering a lot of the connection fees that we owe to the town of air up front because of their commitment to it. I don't want to I don't want to put that language in here. I'm, I'm opposed to that Barry. With all respect, I don't recall I, I recall that there had to be an ROI on this and that, you know that's effectively what you're talking about meaning we will lay out some money and then we'll get paid back. I don't recall that being a stipulation or even the discussion of that as a you know a hard and fast we're going to take the first three years worth of fees and apply and recoup $200,000. I don't remember I don't care that. how long it takes. To recoup those I was fees. just using it as an example. I understand. I didn't mean to cut you off. Please continue. So, so well, I, I pretty much finished, but I, I just don't recall any stipulation that that would be the case. If, if I if I can just just to, to get the numbers so that we know what we're talking about, we spent one hundred and ninety thousand dollars in engineering to design it. We spent another hundred thousand dollars in construction management. That construction management was covered by the grant, and the town was reimbursed. We spent one hundred and ninety. Two businesses contribute $160,000 back to us. I'd say we got our money back because that's the seed money Ooh. to start the operation of the Remember of the of the, um, no, of the district. I, I don't remember the contribution of two businesses netting us that were only so that the town effectively only expended thirty thousand dollars. So that means we're giving hundred hundred sixty thousand dollars back to the taxpayers. No. So then we then that's not true. What's not true is that. If, if, if we expended hundred ninety thousand dollars taxpayer money, we did, and businesses contribute hundred sixty thousand, therefore, uh, then therefore, that there should be hundred sixty thousand going back to the taxpayer. Instead, well, what we did was we took that hundred sixty thousand dollars and paid forward sewer fees. So the town has still expended hundred ninety thousand dollars, and we've already paid off the debt service, and that do that debt has already been paid back. So we've already covered and we've already paid back the bond on the on those notes. Didn't we cover it this year? It was paid off. So, Barry, I understand your point, but we spent three hundred thousand to get two point two million, and we hope we're hopefully we're spurring some economic development. We've already taken in money in building permits. We're taking money in, in tax revenue. I'd say we got our money back for the for that three hundred two hundred thousand. Well, I really say I'm, that. I'm really not clear what's being said here. You said two businesses contributed $160,000 yeah. that into the general fund? No, they for specifically for the sewer project, and we're using that to start, and using that as seed money to start a, to, to have a, a, uh, a sewer fund, a sewer enterprise fund for the Four Corner District. We're using that as our seed money to pay bills until we start collecting money. Because we owe AIR money as businesses connect. We have to pay them connection fees. We're using the money that we're getting from the, those, those businesses that contributed to it to help pay it until we start recouping some of the money from the, um, from the users. So the if users. I understand correctly, what you're saying, Barry, is you think that that 190000 should come back into the general fund? It should. It should at some point, think? there should be a refund of $190,000 into, the, into, the, uh, into, the, into free cash, excess of the you should work. Yes. And how would... How would that we make that happen in these regulations? You you could you couldn't. And the way these regulations are written, it's not possible. Yeah. That's my that's my problem. And and so I'm, I'm adamantly how, opposed to doing well, that. Well, so how would we rewrite the regulations to make it happen? Right. I mean, Connection fees is the only way you could do it. Yeah, you, you, go. you said it was it was supposed to, it was intended the way it was architected the way it was discussion all the discussions I had as a member of the FinCon architecting that original helping to architect that original presentation right. at town meeting. Was that there was we would we would engineer a, a scheme where the the a portion of the connection fees over years 10 15 20 years even if it's 25 bucks a year something reasonable something small mm -hmm. but the whole point was businesses are going to be there we want you know the the town didn't want to pay for a sewer we we got a sewer in there was people who didn't want to take the risk that we wouldn't get the grant so to 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 offset that we said we we intend to recoup that money over a time period back to the taxpayers or back to free cash in the worst case. Barry, I have to be honest with you. Your recollection and mine are not the same. 
I don't ever recall saying we're going to pay back the town. I remember. I'm the, sorry. I remember the risk calculation on Woodbury on this that we said, you know, we're going to be taking a risk on something we're not certain is going to return a thing, right? In the, we, the we first year we didn't. Yeah, we entered a, a contest. Yeah, the um, first year we did. We lost. We didn't get yeah. the grant. But is, are we really talking about a, a which bucket is it issue? Meaning, if the money did come back, it would have. To, it could either go to free cash or it could go to this fund, correct? The One sewer commission could vote to reimburse the town over time once they get up and running. Yeah. But, and by the way, these regulations can be amended at any time after a public hearing by either this board or by the, the sewer commission. Because don't forget, your only sewer commission is for one year. Next year, the sewer commission takes us over. But if this money went into free cash, we still have these expenses to pay that are being paid for of by, course. by this money. And that money would have to come from someplace else, correct? It'd have to come from somewhere. Yeah. And it would yeah. end up coming from the general fund because the way an enterprise fund works, if they have a deficit, the general fund has to make it up. So I think it's a matter of accounting. And in Barry's scenario, we're actually re sort of formally repaying the taxpayer for taking a risk, right? And I, uh, I'm on board with that 100%, Barry, from the day we actually went at this thing. We, we were actually going to ask the taxpayers to pay for the whole sewer district, the whole right. sewer project. And we said, no way, and for these very reasons. Yep. Um, and, and that's why we said we're going to leverage 300 yeah. to get 2.2, and we were successful. So I think we're down to a matter of accounting at this point, because we're not giving this money back to taxpayers. We take free cash. We, we unfortunately don't fund free cash to taxpayers. <laughs> Patricia, put your water back when you were water business manager. Is there a way for the sewer commission, if they so choose, to repay the general fund down the road? I, there is. We, we could add it to the intergovernmental quarterly expense yep. that happens, but you know it would have to be um, a policy thing. They would have to agree upon it. Um, we recently revised all our intergovernmental charge policies, and all the enterprises signed off on what those charges were going to be. If we were going to change it, then everybody has to agree to it. Um, and and to, to your point, I do remember some of those discussions. I don't remember that that was ever made. Um, that we ever memorialized that. You know, I don't since this is was, but, but I do remember the discussion. Um, you know, so I while we're sore commissioners at the moment, we could insert this in there and then turn it over to them where you say that you're repaying $19,000 per year. Um, how much money? 190 or 160? 190. $19,000 per year for 10 years. Insert that language in there from connection fees, charges, and whatnot to reimburse, and that money will be returned to, it can only go to free cash. Can we start it after year three or four? Can I at least have yeah. the district up and running? Yeah. That, so we don't need to make that decision tonight. But we need to make it while we're sore commissioners. Yeah, we completely forgot. You know. I think we need to make it while we're the commissioners. The other thing you need to do on page 33, uh, number one, application and permit for building connections. You need to remove A. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is no residential. There is. There is. So, no, the Molten property is a residential property. That's oh, in the residential district. That's why. We, oh, that's why we have to redraft the bylaws. Yeah. That's how you got the. That's how we won it. But they needed residential property in it. Correct. What am I missing? The senior the, the okay, housing. The issue is with the bylaw. Yeah. So okay. So you can't establish this. Correct. Sorry about that. Thank yeah. you for the correction. No, that's okay. So, uh, let me I'm, ask you. I'm me, fine. So to get back to what Josh said, I'm fine if it's five years out that it starts the repayment plan, so that by year 15, um, the general funds may hold by 19 grand a year. I know that seems insignificant, but to me, we've got a home run, but we have an opportunity to make this a grand slam. And, and all right, I know people don't like baseball, whatever. We, 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 we got a we got a field goal. We can make this a, a touchdown, right? Oh, let me That's, ask you a question. Let me ask you, know? you a question. I don't know why we would put that in the regulation. Why can't that be adopt the regulations and then adopt a policy as the sewer commission that effective in year five, this, the four corner sewer district will begin to repay the town $19,000 a year for 10 years? To do an MOU between the Board of Selectmen and the sewer commissioner. No, with we yourself. are the sewer commissioner. I know exactly what I'm saying this time. Oh, I think I okay. do. Do an MOU between the Groton Board of Selectmen and the Four Corners sewer commissioners and structure that thing, sign it and say that this MOU is fully transferable and enforceable and must be complied with upon any transfer of... Uh, responsibility for the oversight of this district. But we won't be able to vote because we'll have conflict of interest. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. 
Well, we can have an MOU with ourselves. Well, so one plus, now one I just have to ask, where's this nineteen thousand dollars going to come from? Are Connection the, fees. The, well, it'll come. It'll come. Flow rates. It'll come. It'll come from their surplus. Every Fair. year there'll be a surplus. Hopefully. Hopefully. And we Hopefully. Know that. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean. No. So that's why I said let's wait till year five. Let's see if there get is a surplus. Up, get it up and running. Yep. No pun intended. No, yeah, yeah th believe me, I, I, I got you. Well, so you, always, you can also say uh, up to, not to exceed $19,000. Can you just you structure an MOU surplus. for the future, like for the, like our next yeah. meeting? Yeah, your sewer commission is for a year. I get it, but I don't want to lose this. Uh, you won't so believe me. It's the here. point's valid. I understand. Okay? I, I remember there was going to be some kind of repayment. I don't remember well. that. Oh, well, like three of us do now. I'm glad I could refresh so many people's memories. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet is clean now. So no, I Patricia. Patricia was I thought you Patricia, were okay, no. Josh, and Barry. I remember well, the discussion. I don't remember that. It, it was never a formal vote. Committee. And I'm going to go back and look at That's minutes. Problem, you can look at minutes all you want. You we're the board of selection now. As a now, taxpayer and this is that doesn't calling. benefit from any sort of district, I certainly think that for the greater good of the community, it's great to do that. But it's nice to be repaid and not have to pay for somebody else's I'll draft the MOU. Okay. You also have to be careful because one of the benefits of being an enterprise is that the general fund can't go in and, and raid your surplus. So, you, you know, you might want to negotiate or, or at least discuss it with um, some of the sort commissioners, the other sort commissioners. They will be and taking see, it over. Just to make sure. I would. Just sure. get that I'll get it, like get it started. Are you, are you, so what you're saying is you might be, you might be okay. violating that sacred... Can we continue along, please? ...separation between enterprise funds um, and general funds? So, I'd ask the board to uh, close motion, the public hearing. Well, we close the public hearing before we vote. Yep. I'd ask the board to close the public hearing. Please. Is there any questions or are there any questions from the public? Seeing none. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adopt the connection, I'm sorry, the, the regulations. regulations for the Four Corners Sewer District uh, as written. Any reference to the, um, the MOU? No, it's part of the regulations. It's not a regulation. You can do that as a separate motion, Jack. Well, you can do that separately. Do that first if you'd like. Why can't you have the a commitment to an MOU as part of the motion? I think they have to be clear so that they can start on May 1st. I don't know what the motion the is. MOU I don't know what the MOU before, says. Before May 1st, we can't start. I think you should direct me in a separate vote to draft an MOU, but adopt the regulations right. as presented. So moved. Motion's been made. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. I just noticed this. I did notice it when I was reading it this morning. Uh, the very first line here says Where, adopt, which page, Becky? On, yeah, page 23 at the top, chapter 390, the title, and it says history adopted by the Board of Selectmen on April 2nd. Oh, that's a typo. It should say April 3rd, April 23rd. <laughs> okay. Wow. What have you proofread my contract? Uh, well, this one I fell asleep halfway through because I got too <laughs> bored by it. <laughs> But I did see that. All right. Who else has problems sleeping in town? We will give you our Please contract to start with. Motions were made, seconded, further discussion. <laughs> Nobody's going to take us up on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That Aye. sounds like it's unanimous to me. me. Yeah, okay. We had another motion. I move that we uh, <clears throat> instruct the town manager to draft an legally appropriate. MOU to uh, pay the general fund back or the taxpayers back, however it needs to be structured, the $109,000 over a time period to be established. Motion's been made. A second. And seconded. Can you amend uh, and to be discussed with the existing discussion? Discussion. Uh, friendly amendment, so, so yeah. uh, received, yes. You got that done? I did not. Okay, so the amendment is. Uh, the MOU to be discussed with the, the current sewer commission. Other it's friendly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous as well. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if, if, going back, if I could just continue with um, before we talk about your major policy initiative, just to wrap me up for the night. Um, consider proposing that the town meeting and definitely postpone consideration of the CPA application uh, for First Parish Church. 
I left the meeting earlier tonight to go up to talk to the CPC uh, with a specific request of them to consider not bringing that application forward. I don't know what they ended up deciding up there, but based on the threat of a potential lawsuit by moving forward with this particular issue, I think it's in the town's best interest, and I'm, I'm making this recommendation to Chief Financial Officer, that to take this on to spend $41,000 with a potential lawsuit in which the town of Acton has spent $250,000 worries me. And I don't know if we want to do that because basically what happened is the um, SJC turned the case back to Superior Court. They have to make a ruling. That's going to be subject to appeals, um, I would imagine. And then who knows when the final determination is going to be made. I don't want to put the town at risk. I think we should wait and I would ask the Board of Selectmen to consider if the CPC goes forward with it, making a negative recommendation to town meeting. That's my request to the board. Yeah, as well as um, we had this discussion with town council uh, during our pre-town meeting meeting again this afternoon. And while town council's earlier recommendation and opinion was that it may be permissible for this to move forward, he has well felt that in light of the litigation, at least in Acton, that to expend uh, or appropriate $41,000 with the potential for getting embroiled in a lawsuit that's already caused another surrounding community $250,000. It, it's not whether we're for or against the article, it's what's the prudent um, direction to take. And it could take, what did he say, it could take a couple of years for this to clear up. So if the First Parish Church wants to move on with their project, that's all well and good, but if we commingle CPC funding in order to do that and we get embroiled in a lawsuit, uh, the CPC doesn't have a budget to pay for that lawsuit, but the Board of Selectmen would have to pay for that, hence the taxpayers. When did we get, when did the um, legal opinion come in from the Supreme Judicial Court, or when did that, when was that last initiative? Town Council did that, Jack. I think we. Three weeks ago. Yeah, it was yes. a, end of March, beginning of middle of March, yeah, and then March. town council opined mm -hmm. and gave us a, an opinion saying yeah. he thinks we're okay. Yeah, which he still thinks we may yeah, be yeah, okay. Yeah. And then and then we got the letter last week from the um, Americans for Separation of Church and State saying, hey, we're keeping an eye on you and we're concerned with with, with this. Okay, but when did the action? To return, I think you told me that. To return to the SJ, yeah. to the Court? That was in um, that was, February? That was before the opinion we got from town council. Oh, yes. yes. So the only thing that's changed is someone threatened a lawsuit. Correct. Um, okay. That's the only thing that's changed. That's the, uh, act, act, absolutely. So, okay. So we got an opinion from our town council, and then someone threatened a lawsuit and our opinion from town council has now changed no no my opinion was always not to move forward with it no, our opinion oh. from town council they're correct his changed. opinion has not changed whether you could be right or not his opinion says if you want to be safe and not get sued don't do this that's correct that's exactly what, that's he, said. what he said trish you were there don you were there you both heard the same thing i'm not arguing what was we said all heard the, i just want I'm to make sure that we all heard the same thing and we're sort of yeah. a target community we're a target There's community I'm sorry, Jack. Yeah, just uh, I was just uh, observing to myself that if all it takes is a, I'll, I'll back up. Thanks. I'm all set. Uh, <laughs> you out of a lawsuit. I hear where you're going, Jack. Yeah. Go ahead. We've already had a CPC grant move forward for this property in a previous year for a significant amount of money, and that work's already been done. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we already being sued? No, I'm not inviting a lawsuit. We approach, we just have four years, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. That was three years ago in the, in the, in the appeal process and the, the right to uh, file a suit is over on that particular 203,000. This is a brand new appropriation. I, I just think it does not make sense. I'm, I'm texting to see if the CPC made a decision tonight on what they're gonna do for you, but I'm, I'm just concerned right now that moving forward with all this legal uncertainty, regardless of town council's opinion, I recommended from the start not to move forward with this. This opinion that came in just solidified my recommendation. Did, 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 if I'm not mistaken, part of the acting was that there was, it was stained glass, right? Was there something involving stained with glass? With religious imagery. Yeah, so there's religious iconography on the stained glass, and which to me is quite significantly different than we're fixing up a wall that's falling down. 
I, I just <laughs> just putting it out there, whether or not. I, so I understand your point. Um, and that being said, I, I'm not in favor of, of um, a. I don't like to be threatened, but b. Uh, uh, I'm not in favor of subjecting this town to something that um, may cost us money. On the other hand, we can't allow any. Boy, I'm choosing my words extremely carefully here. Any organization with a bone to grind against a certain agenda to come and threaten a lawsuit because we're, we're, we're in the process of doing something and shut us down. And it's a risk factor, Barry. I, I understand this. I'm just, there, these are things I'm weighing right now and deciding this or not. And uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm quite challenged with this one. You can leave at the town meeting, but I mean, right now, my recollection is we're two in favor two opposed and Jack's at town meeting. Is that correct? I think you're right. Uh, so uh, I totally agree that it should be totally, it should be fine to spend the money on preserving the building because the building is Groton's history. Uh, but I can't in good conscience say that the town should go ahead at this very minute in the climate where um, there is good reason to anticipate that it, we could embroil ourselves in uh, some very expensive litigation. And we could just recommend that we indefinitely postpone until such time that the SJC right. has made a determination that just bring this back and the church would have the option of proceeding forward with their project being short this forty odd thousand dollars in funds um, now or waiting until such time that we could appropriate it. CPC no. voted to rescind their recommendation tonight. They won't be bringing it forward. They won't be bringing it forward. So, well. so then, that wish we knew that 10 minutes ago. No, it's fine. It's a valid discussion. Connie Sartini. Uh, my question is, I don't know. All I said is, yes, voted to rescind their recommendation. Okay. There were five members there tonight. Fine. Thank you. I believe that. Oh, fact, four members. It, I don't know for sure, but uh, I'm. I believe the applicants have also had conversation about the wisdom of pursuing at this point. I know they were there tonight discussing it with the CPC right. when I was upstairs. Since the CPC has voted that way, yep. does that uh, mean that the selectmen will make a motion to indefinitely postpone? It's on the warrant. That's why I'm saying that. A motion to indefinitely postpone is debatable, but the, the question here now is if the CPC withdraws their recommendation, only they can recommend things to town meeting. I don't know if that takes it off the warrant. I got to find out tomorrow. At town meeting, then? I'll have an update for you Monday. It's, I mean, the warrant's already printed and mailed, so I mean, at this juncture, it's just going to wait till town meeting. Correct. So moving right along, then. Mr. Chairman, um, as you. Yes, oh, Peter, I'm sorry. I just one quick question. Is, is there any uh, litigation currently pending that would, that's going to offer clarity to this or not? Yes. There is, okay. The SJC sent the, the case acting cases back before. to the lower court. The trial. Yeah. Trial court. To trial. Thank you. Trial. Okay. And now the town of Acton is defending itself against okay. this through trial. So that's 250 and counting at this juncture. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, as you yes. know, we adopted a section of the general laws that um, requires us, when there are ballot questions, to send out an information packet. Now, within that information uh, packet, you give a questions on you, you give a summary of the question, you give what a yes vote does, what a no vote does, and then you have a for argument, yes, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an opposition argument. Mike Bouchard and I have drafted a packet, and if you go to um, page 44 of your packets, you will see the information uh, packet that we um, that we drafted um, for you. I can do it much quicker this way. Um, and so the Board of Selectmen, by law, has to approve this packet before it goes out. And we need to mail it out seven days before the, um, seven days before the uh, election. Well, we're giving it to you way in advance of that. Mike and I worked really hard to get this done, and, and Mike did a, a, the bulk of the work, obviously, um, to get this to the Board of Selectmen because we want you to approve this so that we can have it ready for the town meeting next Monday night. So I'm asking the Board of Selectmen, um, Becky pointed out some typos. We didn't have a chance to get the final comments from town council. 
but this is the format in which we want to do it. These are the arguments in which we would use. These are the summaries in which we would put out. And we'd ask the selectmen to sign off on this so that we can make it available next Monday night at town meeting um, prior to the debate on the uh, marijuana bylaw. So I'm asking the board to approve this with town council's blessing, subject to town council's blessing. So um, in addition to the edits that I sent, there were there was one thing that I noticed that was consistent throughout, but so there's a lot of repeating stuff here. But yep. on, so if you go to question two and you see non-binding referendum is the headline and then argument in favor, question two, and it says uh, yes on question two and then argument against question two, uh, no vote on question two. And that is consistent all the way through that it says a uh, yes rather than a uh, yes vote. Oh, no, that's and a typo. It's good it, catch. Well, it, but it's for Where's every that? question, so I, I wondered if it was done. Pardon me? It's cut and paste. It was cut and paste. Yes, right. That's why I missed it. Yeah. Okay, so. So we can add that. So the word, if you, I mean, if it wasn't done intentionally, then it should be changed. No, we should, we should add it. It was not done intentionally. So the other thing that I noticed that was consistent and I think is oh, done intentionally. What? No, I got that. I was looking up. I was looking farther up, and okay, you're right. right, right. The yes, vote okay. is what it needs to say. Right. So the other thing that I noticed that is consistent is that it's the arguments for the yes on each question. It says a yes will advise the board of selectmen, but the argument for the no, it says a no vote will advise the board of selectmen and planning board. And it, the first time I saw that, I corrected to say a board of selectmen and planning board under the yes but then i realized i think that is intentional it is intentional because the yes vote just says leave it the way it is exactly and the no vote is where the planning board has to do some work that's why <laughs> that was done intentionally okay so any other questions i want to thank mike bouchard for his his fine work I have uh, to say this. I'm very impressed when people come out with these <laughs> lengthy things and I mean I can go through and edit little bits and pieces of typos but um, or, or language funniness but a lot of work written the whole thing together. in the first place is amazing yeah, to me. I sure did a lot of work here. <laughs> yep. So with regard to the against description under uh, question two, I think, I think that um, there should be a reference to people's understanding, and I know there are attempts to be that reference here, but people's understanding that, in general, I believe that people, if, when they voted in the national, or sorry, in the state election on this, they they were voting to allow people to buy marijuana here in our, in our state. Um, but I don't think that people felt anything about a local, the, the local ramifications, and I think that that is not as, as specifically called out here as it, as it could be, and clear, as clearly called out here as it could be. So I, I actually wrote that, so, okay. and, I, and I tried to channel you, you Jeff. No, 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 I tried to channel you, so I, I, I was anticipating that. I didn't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the, if you look it on page, if you look on page five, on the top where it says, while a majority of the residents what of town- page? On, on page, 49. I'm sorry. 49. Page 5 of the document. Page 5 of the document, page 49. 49 I'm sorry, thank you. I, um, I put here, legalizing marijuana in the Commonwealth does not mean Groton should allow these businesses to be established in Groton. Allowing this in Groton is not in the best interest. So I, I did say that because yep. I, above that I say, residents in this town have never had the ability to vote on such specific specificity on these matters. I thought that addressed it. Do you want it to be even more? Than that? Actually, I think I'd actually like to be simpler and more general. Oh. Um, the idea of voting with, I, I noted that, vote with such specificity. I, I'm very concerned, and I'm actually willing to lay down a bet, that participation in this question will be lower than participation in the first question. Because this question is so complex, have, we've made it so complex that I think people are going to start to read it and have their eyes glaze over and say, I can't cast a responsible vote here. And so I'm very concerned that um, the, the against argument is not as sort of simplified as it 
as it could be. Okay. I'd like to offer uh, to a rewrite sure. back to you. Oh, if, absolutely. If I, like I said, I was trying to channel you. Yeah, so. I appreciate it, Mark. And you know, everybody's. I, I think everybody's working at this in the same with, with good faith. It's just I'd like to offer something that I think could be clearer based on what I've heard from people. Okay. And and please ask the board whether they indulge that. Yeah. So you are talking about the that particular the yeah. generic. Yes, uh, for and against paragraphs before question two. Yeah, because if you recall, right. my big thing was this should be just a generic question. I know, and, but and, and legally so, it can't be. Yeah, so. it can't be legally, but I think that there is an opportunity for a generic explanation that mm -hmm. is really very simple. I, I will agree that when I read this, I actually thought the second half of the paragraph maybe should have come first, or maybe we didn't need the first half of the paragraph. So yeah. that would simplify. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll do that. I'll get that back to you by Wednesday or so. Please, please right. do. Anything? But if you, well. If, assuming it's okay with the board. It's fine by me. Yeah, and, and so I, in, as part of this discussion, uh, let me just uh, update you, because we discussed last week, or not, I guess we didn't meet last week, two weeks ago, um, about speaking at town meeting. And I did talk with the moderator, Jason, about giving a report about the ballot questions. And in our discussion, he uh, decided that it really made more sense to do it at the time that we discussed the other warrant articles. So I have, and he said it would, he would call on us to give a report on the articles and that it would be okay to add in information about the ballot questions. So a, a, put something together that I will tweak even more. But I, I think it would be very helpful if this is ready to be handed out. And we're not going to get to that till the second night anyway. So it doesn't have to be ready next week if you need a few days to revise. I, I would think. like to be able to. I would like to have it there the first night. You never if know. you can, yeah. Well, if Jack gets me, with the board's permission, I would ask the board to vote to authorize this document subject to Jack's uh, revision. And if he sent it, I know this whole washing of the thing, but this is more scrivener than anything else. I will send that out to the board, and unless there's a strong objection, I will have it printed and ready to go Monday night. Okay. With the board's permission, I would like to do that. There's um, no problem with sending a draft out to the, the entire board for consideration. Why is we don't comment it. on it? Yep. Uh, so once Jack gets it to me, I'll get it out. Okay. John Geiger. Um, I would like to suggest that all the members of the board get a hold of the publication that came out of the state back in preparation for the November 2016 election on this subject. Um, I think you'll find some sections in there that specifically uh, talk about municipal involvement. So before we draw a conclusion that nobody knew they were voting um, for anything local, uh, read that and make sure you still feel that way. Please. I, I understand that it may be very specific, but I don't think it, it has any bearing on what people believe they, they voted for. John, I, I understand your point, and Jack, you got a good counterpoint. It, well, the, it's out there. Now, do you fault people for not reading it, or is reading it okay? You know, uh, just. Nobody's asking us to undo that vote. What we're asking is for a well-informed public to understand where we are now and what the implications of where we are now are for where we're going to be. So I agree, if we were, if people were saying, I'd like reconsideration on that vote, you can make a good argument that says, listen, you have everything you need. But I think the opportunity here is to make sure people understood what that vote did and didn't do and what this current initiative does or doesn't do. Fair so, enough. Do you need a motion? I need a motion. What was the motion? I move that we approve. Oh, I'm sorry. You're still okay. to say. Go ahead. That, no, I'm. In general, I'm fine with revising the against two, and as long as we have a chance to review it. The question comes if one of us dislikes it, or has a challenge with it. it I bring it up. Put it on the agenda for you Monday night. Immediately becomes, you know, un un unapprovable, right? Correct. That's the challenge with these types of singular drafts where we can't debate them. Um, I guess the second challenge is, and, and I apologize, Becky, um, could you explain a little bit more about your intent to um, t 
talk about these items. Uh, you said you're preparing a report on behalf of the selectmen? Yes. So, uh, typic, uh, what's your intention with that report? Are you going to discuss it with us first? Uh, I'm just trying to get some clarity around if you're, if right. you're, well, if you're I, a selectman, I just want to understand. Uh, I actually was not clear what the requirement was on that. Um, Jason Cope is going to give you, um, you're not the lead proponent, so how long was he, did he say? Three, three minutes. minutes. So you have three minutes yeah. to talk about this, and that will be at the time when the two articles are on the town meeting warrant, just prior to the first one, once the moratorium extension and the others to the right. rezone. And so basically I will be... create the zoning, excuse me, correct. not the rezone. Correct. Saying the zone. that we voted unanimously in support of those two articles, and we strongly urge the, the uh, citizens to vote for them and what if you didn't want what if you don't want any marijuana this is the process th that follows I will refer to the handout and explain that this is the way what you so, have so to do. You're, you're just trying to do a factual absolutely this is what's this is what we've absolutely. done this is what's the board authorized Becky no, no, I, I, I just wanted to understand but as long as you say what if you don't way. want any marijuana is one argument and you can also say what if you do want it Right. So, I mean, if you're going to give well, a report, this is, I'd like yeah. it to be a balanced report that this is a mechanism to have the Board of Selectmen gauge the public response for the individual um, sub-businesses that could exist in the right. town of Groton. And this will get us the, a temperature of the public's desire, or lack thereof, to have any of the above. So as long as it's balanced, I'm fine with it. Yes. That's absolutely my intention. Okay. No, I appreciate it. I, I didn't mean to hold this up. I just wanted to clarify. No, no. It's you you were there at the meeting where they, they decided that. Oh. No, no. Um, so, Becky, you had it. You were going to make, did, did the board make a motion? Oh, to, yeah, yeah. So, there is a motion. Uh, we're on that discussion. We, uh, it's, already been, it's already been done. We're on discussion right now. I don't think it. I don't think Becky would make a motion. No. Make no. Make no. Oh, you no. stopped Becky before she made the motion. I didn't yep. mean to cut us off. Go ahead. So uh, I move we approve the, uh, what's this called? <laughs> the town media, the town election uh, information packet. The ballot question information um, packet. packet as discussed with one further revision to be worked on. As well as the change in the word of yes vote right. needs to be put in. Pen, pen, and each one. Uh, if I may, amending pending final town council review. Well, and uh, final acceptance of that lack of modification objection. or lack of re, lack of objection. Lack of objection to the modification prior to next Monday. Does the mod? Okay. So you're making a motion. Uh, the one. Sure. <laughs> Don, you have all that right. She thinks she does. She'll watch the video four or five times to figure that one out, right? Yeah. <laughs> second. Okay. Does the modification have to be unanimously agreed to? What, right well, now? you're 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 voting you're voting tonight to issue it based on the revision. Yeah. If somebody on the board objects to that revision, I would not be comfortable printing it without having the whole board look at it and debate it. So that's my that's just my recommendation that we, we bring it back to you Monday night before a town meeting. Yeah. So we bring it back Monday night before town meeting, and four individuals like the modification, and one does not. Fine. Th but it still has to be debated. It still has to be a, a yeah, vote. Yeah. I thought you were saying that if one person doesn't like the modification, no, no, then no, no, it's, no. Uh, that it, okay. If one doesn't like it, then I bring it before the whole board. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what Barry said. But so, if one doesn't like it, then it's not going to be ready for town meeting next week. It, then it'll be they'll the following then. It two won't versions. be ready for the first night of town meeting. It okay. will be at the adjourned session. It technically doesn't have to be ready until May thirteenth. So how many days before? Seven we days. I have to mail it out seven so days before. We, there's time. We want to get it out early. Yes. Sooner, but sooner so the better. So your and your intention is just to streamline this paragraph a little bit more, right? That, Make it shorter the, against the paragraph. That's my intention. I have no idea how it'll turn out. <laughs> um, yeah. um, all right, Jack, we look forward to receiving that. Um, so, um, we have a motion. Motion made and seconded. Second. I'm catching up. <laughs> Motions are made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And thank you to the work of the town clerk and the town manager yeah. for getting this in, a, in an attempt, even though we foiled that attempt, 
an attempt to make it available by what time we so. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, that's all I have. The last thing um, is a thing from a Jack. Jack? But wait, I know there's that other article, but uh, are you not going to be talking about the police chief search committee? I had no update planned tonight other than we're moving forward with uh, review next Monday. Would you like me to talk about the makeup of the committee? Yes. Okay. Um, I, after consultation, as the, as the board knows, um, as the board knows, there were three of you that were interested in serving um, on the committee. <laughs> And then we talked about having two of you on there, and then we talked about expanding the committee to 11. And before it got too out of control, I had a conversation with Barry, and then I spoke to uh, Jack and, and um, Becky, but I did not relay any conversation, so there was no serial communication or violation of the open meeting law. Connie, duly note that. Um, but I came to the decision that it makes sense to me that this committee was getting too big and that I would now exclude selectmen from serving on the committee. And the reason for that is that I didn't want to give any one selectman an advantage over another one since you guys are the appointing authority. This board is the appointing authority. So to that end, I eliminated members of the board to the town, to the police chief search committee and limited it to seven members. With, with our approval, you excluded us. Yeah, I, I talked to you beforehand and, and let you know that that's what I was doing individually. I don't want anybody to think you just cut us out. No, 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 no. I talked to, as I said, I talked to, I talked to the I three members that were interested. Well. I did not talk to Jack or Allison because you had not expressed an interest in serving on the committee, so I didn't talk to you about it. Um, so the committee's made up now of seven individuals. Uh, the seven individuals are um, Steele McCurdy, Kim Menninger, uh, Greg Baker, Patricia Dufresne, um, now I'm drawing a blank. I got Jason Copey and mm, Bud, Bud Robinson. Bouchard? And Mike Bouchard. That is the seven members on the search committee. So you're a non-voting member? I, I'm, not, I'm not even on it. I'm not even, I'm letting this committee, I know I ultimately have to make the decision on who to bring forward to you, but I am not going to interfere with their work. I'm going to let them, they have all, we received 41 applicants for the board's information. I sent all 41 resumes to them. They have them. They're meeting next Monday at 3 o'clock. They're going to cull that list down to however many. They want to interview 41 people, we'll, we'll interview 41 people. They'll cull that list down. They'll determine who they want to interview. They'll do the interviews. They'll rank them. They'll give me a list of ranking. Now, I will sit in the meetings and listen. Uh, and then once they, they narrow that list down, it'll go to a second panel made up of area police chiefs. And then I will make my decision on which finalists, two or more, to bring to the Board of Selectmen, in which you will do public interviews and an assessment center. Because this is a charter stipulated committee. No, it's, the process is stipulated. No, the process says I shall select and bring to you two or more members. No, 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 you're missing my point. Oh, hold on a second. This is your committee to appoint. This is my process. Don't we usually affirm your appointments? No, 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 because this is, this is a, you never affirm my search committees. No. We I should. Guess we don't. We, nope. I guess when you think about it, we don't. You've we never seen your appointment to yeah. boards and committees. So Correct. That's your required to. Not the search. My search committee is my it. process. I get it. Thank you. So um, I think uh, it's a great committee. When, when you sent me the list, I think it's an excellent group of people. Um, I was surprised the last thing I had heard, there were two of us that from this board that were going to be on it. So something changed with you, is that right? There were several things that changed, yes. Yeah, it, 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 it started getting so big, Becky, and then it, I tried to bring it back, and then it got bigger, and next thing you know, I was up to 15 well, members. And <laughs> I know, I'm just asking, because the last discussion at our, at our board was that you had said yes, you'd there, give up your seat. There was, there was many people who disliked that decision. That I gave up my seat. Not that I, not that someone else had it, but that I gave up my seat. Mm -hmm. And so I, I uh, contacted the town manager, said that hey, I'm hearing from the people that they wish me to be on it. Um, however, I think now we have a quorum, and so now this creates a problem, and that started the process going forward. I see. Okay. You also made some other changes from your original plan. Yeah, I was going to have a uh, member of the police department. Uh, management team sit on the uh, search committee. 
but the applicant pool required me to change that. So I eliminated that. Okay. Can you just remind me again of the individuals who are on it? Yeah, it's or how uh, many, just how many women are on it? Uh, two. Thank you. And then your plan originally, uh, Melissa was going to be on it. Yep, but her and I are not. Her and I are going to sit back, and, and that's why I kept it to seven numbers. I think it's going to work well. I think it's a good process. I, I, think I actually committee. think that it is a very good committee and a good process. Good. And and there is a. It's as I thought about it, it's questionable to have anybody from our board on in the early stages when we are the uh, decision making and appointing authority. No, it's worked well in the past. Yeah, I like having, when I do a search for department head, I like having a selectman participate in that process so that when I bring the finalists, because I'm making the appointment, it's mm -hmm. good to have the selectman, but in this instance, this is your appointment. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different. So thank you, Becky, I'm glad you brought that up. I should have updated the board on that. All right, anything further from uh, other business? Jack. Oh, Jack, yes. We had one of our selectmen goals to be um, uh, or like a large scale initiative decision uh, process. And so I provided this outline. Um, this reflects the way the last two companies that I've worked with have taken on big projects. And so I try to <coughs> modify this to be something other than the way stuff works in software companies. The basic goal is when we're going to take on something that has a a large financial consequence, we should go through a, a bit of a process to figure out, um, to evaluate that, that, that initiative. And that could be anything from building a new sewer system to taking on new employees at a fire or police department to granting the waiver of a fee. Um, when something has a large impact, there are a variety of decisions or about, uh, points that you should evaluate. Um, and I try to lay these out here. I try to make it as flexible as possible um, and offer some criteria for you know, when it's larger than X dollars. Um, we, we have the, it gets triggered. But anyway, I offer this here for your review uh, and I'm open to any questions. I find this process can look like it is cumbersome. It doesn't necessarily need to be cumbersome. And I think I provided opportunities for all or portions of it to be waived if we determine that a particular project warrants uh, doing so. Uh, what I think this will do is it will force us to consider some things that we're not forced to consider if we just go through, oh, that's a good idea, and we start thinking about things as good ideas rather than um, as initiatives that have very important components that are worthy of thought before they're adopted. So I offer it here as a way to fulfill our uh, selections objective, and let's take it from there. Um, um, questions for Jack? Under procedures, second bullet, second major bullet. Uh, uh, sorry, one last thing. I did go through this with uh, Gary and Bud, and actually much of this has uh, there, in fact, most of it has been touched by, by them and influenced by them. <coughs> Excuse me. Under procedures, second major bullet, fourth item down. I think that should be an A, not an E. Affected entities, OK. <laughs> because unless you're actually saying that you're, you're, there's a cause, you're effect, right. you're more, I, I, I mean, that's what you have to define what you mean by that. You mean that people that might be. Uh, people who are affected by this. Yeah, then it's an A. OK. Uh, you know. I always get those confused. It's a it's affect a comes before effect. <laughs> That's the way I remember it. Anything further? So, Do you want me to bring this back to a future meeting for adoption? Um, Does anybody have any initial comments? I'm just curious. Um, I actually, uh, I thought this kind of was in partnership uh, in some ways with your, the earlier, the building committee oh. discussion, that I think it, they, they kind of fit together and both are touching on something that I think that we um, have not, as a town, not always done really well, which is the, the kind of overview planning and thoughtfulness um, 
by the board about plans rather than just having enthusiastic groups come and or you know some some cohort of people come and say this is something that we want to do and then the board says yes or no or gets brought along or doesn't um, but can you in your experience uh, on the board what sort of things that have happened might have to might go through this process well I, I'm sorry to bring this up but the um, Indian Hill initiative we we forewent a lot of revenue mm -hmm. and we for we gave up that revenue and in return for what we considered to be economic development and the only we didn't put any dollar or numbers behind economic development we simply talked about the concept of economic development and we didn't do any analysis that said if we give up five hundred thousand dollars in fees we will mm -hmm. the town will be returned a certain amount of fees. We saw this actually in the very sewer issue that we talked about here right. today. We, that is an example of a doing an ROI analysis um, and how you'll get recouped. And in the sewer case, we might have just said, look, for 300,000 bucks offset by $160,000 worth of donations, there's $140,000 worth of town money and it's worth it. Um, but at least when you're required to do that ROI analysis, mm -hmm. you, you are, you're required to say, Economic development is going to be good, and someone will stand up and say, "Well, just tell me what economic development really means. Does that mean money to offset the tax rate, or does that mean that the Groton Inn makes more money?" And that forces a discussion about these taxpayer dollars that you're spending. So, um, would some of the stuff that's in the capital budget that we're funding this year, like the repairs, say fire station, or um, fire truck? Not a fire truck. Would you imagine this happening for a fire truck? Yeah, you might. Actually, you, pr you probably would. You could, you could actually do this. And we do a lot of this for things like a fire truck. Right, Mark? We take Absolutely. Our existing fire truck will take a half a million dollars to repair. We expect it to last four years. A uh, new truck will take will cost a million bucks. We, last to, to, we expect it to last 15 years. The return on this is you know X versus Y. Mm -hmm. We do that. We do and, do that. And it, it can be that simple. You can go through this and you can you can stretch it out or you can condense it, but if you have a set of procedures that you at least ask yourself, is this line item required for this initiative? You're forced to, to say yes or no, and some can say, what do you mean no? Yes, <coughs> yes, we have to do this, and this is why. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I, I really like this idea of, of getting it, a process kind of formalized. Um, you know, for me, I'm a little less concerned with forecasting dollar for dollar so much as I am you know really liking the idea of listing anticipated risks and consequences and you know we kind of in part because of open meeting law we come to these discussions and here's a topic and we kind of go around and say where each of us stands and we sometimes overlook mm -hmm. you know making sure that we have all thought through all of these different pieces um, so I, I I think this looks great. What do you mean by dollar for dollar? I, I'm not challenging you. I'm just, to, I'm just you know, to me, it, it. I'm not sure how much effort it's worth putting in for things like the Indian Hill. If we're going to waive this much money in revenue, what's our return on investment in terms of economic development? Anticipate, you know, that that becomes really there. Are, there's a lot of fine print to put behind those numbers. So to me, it may or may not be worth a ton of time to figure that out. But if we list those as risks and consequences, at least we understand that yeah. we've thought through that we're kind of gambling on something that may or may not. If we do this for um, going to a full-time fire department, we exactly. will not do a dollar for dollar. Right. We'll do a dollar for response time, or we'll do a dollar for some mm -hmm. other soft return. Yeah. But we're going to be forced to say, what does this half million dollars a year buy us? Yeah. And we'll express it somehow. Right. We'll express it in a response time, save lives. We could actually, I've been working with Steel on this, we could actually turn the $500,000 worth of firefighting <coughs> increases into a probable number of heart attacks responded to more quickly per year. <laughs> and, and that's the kind of metrics right. that you can, if you really look for them, you can find them. They're valuable. Mm -hmm. So while you're weighing in on major initiatives, I as well think it's a great idea. Um, I'm not sure the nuts and bolts of this whole thing, but I think Allison brings up a good point. It's not always dollar for dollar. Um, you know, 
you, you brought up a point earlier about the Indian Hill reduction and how it stimulates economic development. It's not always dollar for dollar on that. It's that, yeah, will the Groton Inn do better because Indian Hill's coming to town? Probably. Will other restaurants and other business opportunities you know, be able to move into town? Highly likely. Um, does that give a quality of life and, and a diversity of services to the taxpayers? Absolutely. And a lot of these things can't be measured dollar for dollar, but they can be measured in terms of things that um, are accoutrements to the um, growth of the town by the addition of other businesses. Um, I guess, I, and, but when so, you try and go dollar for dollar, and you try and say, well, what's the dollar cost benefit for spending half a million dollars at the fire station? You made a great point that response times are increased, can potentially save lives, and heart attacks can be potentially alleviated in response time in the middle of the night. So this is really good. Um, it's a great template to start with, and I think it's something that we really should put in place. Because Allison hit the nail on the head. A lot of times we sit here and we weigh in and we offer our opinion on a various issue and we vote yay, nay, or abstain for whatever it is, but we really have to do the deep dig on some things, and this gives us a construct in order to do it. And yeah, ROI is not always a financial argument. Mm. Right, I mean, there's obviously things you can't quantify, but an attempt that, that shouldn't say that we don't make some attempt <laughs> to understand all of the aspects, all the pros and cons, and as much as we can quantify them. Well, that dollar value is an important thing for us to determine. Right. That's why I left it the way it is. I get it. Yeah. It's a threshold. Barry? So uh, this is very similar to things that are done for different types of projects in many different businesses and nonprofit entities. Um, but one thing that's missing from it that's always the first uh, decision criteria that has to pass through is does this advance the goals of the organization uh, or the mission, excuse me, I want to use the word mission very clearly here. Does this advance the mission of the organization and any project that doesn't advance the mission of the, the, mission of the organization regardless if it's anything else doesn't pass unless you go redefine your mission because you're, you're deviating from your course who you are or what you want to do. Um, so the only thing that I would, well one of many things, but the initial thing that I feel should be in here as a check boxes, does this advance the mission, uh, has been voted by this board and, and implemented and is in our, on our website of Groton. Mm -hmm. um, and that should be a criteria for moving forward on any project. Um, and that mission statement was made broadly enough to encompass most of these things, but there may be something outlier that people could argue, yeah, hey, it's good ROI, yeah, but we have no business being in that as a town, right? There's no, no reason to be in that as a town, um, such as in I don't know, not say anything. <laughs> there could be many different things in the future. Yeah. Investing in, uh, in, a, in, a, in an RAIT fund would not be something in the best of town, even though there's ROI on it, right? Yeah. So how are we going to bring this thing back? Well, if I, if I can su suggest, we let's put it on a future agenda, and if the board members can take this and mark it up, send it to me, I can try to put together a final draft to bring to you at a future, town me uh, future meeting after town meeting. I think that would be the best way to go about doing it. It yeah. always helps to have a draft to debate. And right. so I know Barry has some points, you have some points, Allison has some points, so I think that's the best way to do it, Josh? Well, I mean, yeah, the, the only thing that I would want to point out is, is that, you know, Jack's term is up on the 22nd of May-ish, and that I would like to hear if, at the conclusion of your term, if we have yet to complete this, if you would help the board and assist us in working through this. I'm, I'm glad to do that, but if there's value to this, you should be able to take it and modify it to be useful without, if I leave town. I just don't want and, to get buried, but, Jack. But, uh, pardon me? I don't want to get buried once yeah. you're gone. Well, that's my name. So you are. <laughs> so so I'm, glad to, I'm glad to continue to participate and to help, um, but I think that it's unnecessary, but I'm glad to do that. I'll call out that there are two things that we probably sh that really do need to be paid attention to. One is the dollar amount, and then lastly, down at the at the bottom, uh, there is a um, under accepted projects tracked by the town manager. Bullet two: cost or timeline deviations from the pro planning proposal. If the amount greater than five percent will be reported to the board of selectmen. That percentage figure should be should also have been a uh, a placeholder. And not a percent. Not a percent, a physical number at this point. And his recommendation is five, but he's not saying it's it should be X, five. It's, it's yes, it should be X percent. Yes. Fair so enough. I was just going to ask, what, what is, what do people think ballpark 
the major, this number, that you know, the threshold number should be? 50 grand. <laughs> I, I was going to say. I was bogged on government to the nothing. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I was going to say 250,000, but that's just me. Oh, but 50,000 is too low. Maybe 150,000, maybe 100,000, 50,000. We've heard your recommendation. Okay. Do we know it? And I'm not just being dismissive. No, I understand. I understand. So why don't we all, rather than just flipping that out, why don't we think about it a little harder? And I probably might raise that number. Well, or lower. Hopefully, quite a bit. Okay. Lower it. <laughs> I want to see if you were listening. I was listening. <laughs> also, note that in the policy, it allows for this to be um, determined to be Wait. not necessary yep. by a vote of four to one. Um, so you could just say uh, we have a we have a twenty thousand dollar expense that we want to do. Do you want to go through this evaluation and? You can take a vote that says no. And at least, you know, there's value in that. There's value in at least asking that Considered question. Considered it. Right. Yeah. Right. I get it. Why, why the supermajority instead of the simple majority? Uh, I just felt that was useful. Um, I think it's in, if. We can fix that. If too. there's only four people are present and it goes three to one, I think you have an, you have an issue. I don't know. Change, change, I'm just, change it. Yeah. You know, rather than. It might be easier to say a supermajority rather than a simple majority as far as the, uh, the... I don't even know what I said. So if there's four people four present, it's three to one. If there's five people present, it's four to one. If there's three people present, it's two to one. Is that what you say? Uh, that would have to be the way a supermajority would have Put to be. Put in whatever you want. I just thought it was useful for that uh, bar to change our practice to be a little higher than just a simple majority. Most excellent. No, this is, this is good. I think it's Jack, right. Thank you for bringing it forward. Well, um, so, minutes we heard that, we have liaison. minutes of April 2nd, to, uh, liaison reports. Um, so, nonprofit council, uh, not a specific liaison responsibility, but I offered, I asked folks who might be interested in, in taking that role to get in touch. Uh, Becky did, um, so absent anybody else saying they're interested in that, I'm going to report into the nonprofit council and talk about transition with them. Uh, and perhaps include Becky in that conversation. Any objections to that? I didn't see the request, but I probably have while I was Oh, you weren't here. here. That's yeah. all good. So, fine. All right. Anything further? No. Anyone else? Minutes. Uh, regularly scheduled meeting, April 2nd, 2018. They are on page, I think, 59? 57. I don't know, they're that long. This we'll is one of Don's time. books. Make a motion that we one of Don's these. Very good. There was one presented in the red line. Yeah, there was one red line change in there. Eutrophication. Eutrophication. I love that I word. Don't like smelling it. But it's better than the putrefication. <laughs> they both are. Yes. There's yeah. too many related, sewer jokes going on here tonight, guys. There actually was one other small typo, but it was negligible, so I'm surprised Becky didn't catch it. I saw it. Okay. I forget, but oh, I saw too. some small typo and thought, oh, it's, 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 who cares? Before your second now? <laughs> <laughs> it's something about taking a turn somewhere, turning. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It didn't change anything. All right, motion's been made, I believe, mm -hmm. and seconded. Is that correct? I don't think a motion was made. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. Allison I'll made second it. second Allison's motion. Sorry. Motions are made and seconded to uh, accept the amended minutes. Uh, for the discussion. Wait, I don't think I can. I don't think I was here. Uh, you were not here. So I can't even. Um, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That is unanimous. I abstain. Are, no, I abstain. Uh, excuse me. That is four to one, four to zero. Four to one. Four, four to zero, zero to one. one. Boy, am I tired. Thank you.